Uh, hello, everyone. Um, uh, today uh, we have um, the meeting of um, the FIDE General Assembly uh, at the last part of FIDE Congress um, that is uh, uh, held online again uh, this year, um, uh, but also on the sites of World Trapped and Bleed Championships here in uh, uh, Warsaw, Poland. Uh, and uh, uh, first of all, uh, I would like to thank uh, the organizers, uh, uh, Government of Poland, uh, uh, the hosts, um, um, for uh, um, uh, making it uh, happen, for a chance uh, to uh, have both the World Championships uh, and FIDE Congress uh, uh, here uh, in uh, Poland, uh, and uh, we are all connected uh, uh, by the modern means of communication uh, uh, today. Um, uh, so again, many thanks. Also, many thanks to all people who have been involved into the organization uh, of uh, the FIDE Congress, including commission meetings, uh, uh, zonal council, FIDE council meeting yesterday, uh, and now the general assembly. Um, uh, I will. Uh, um, make some remarks uh, uh, on uh, on substance of our activities uh, uh, during uh, uh, 2021 uh, and uh, uh, the priorities for the next uh, few months uh, after some uh, formal parts of um, uh, this um, uh, introductory uh, section of uh, our uh, general assembly uh, and uh, i would like uh, now to uh, uh, to ask you to pay attention uh, to the um, uh, to the welcome speech of the uh, Prime Minister of uh, uh, Poland. The end of December 2021 is a marvelous time for chess in Poland. Just a few days ago, the European Blitz and Rapid Chess Championships took place in Katowice, and today we host the most important event of rapid chess in the world, here in Warsaw. I would like to express my gratitude to the FIDE Council and Mr. President Arkady Dvorkovich for giving us the opportunity to organize this event and to host the most talented chess players from all around the world. It is a great privilege for Poland and we will do everything to make the championships run smoothly and safely despite current uneasy conditions. Poland is a country with long-standing chess traditions and a large chess society. Do you know that there are almost 100,000 registered chess players in Poland? And the number is still growing. This is probably due to our grandmaster, Jan Krzysztof Duda as well. We are very proud of him, and I hope that he and the other Top players gathered here in Warsaw will be an inspiration for children and adults all over the world. Good luck, play hard, and enjoy the game. Uh, uh, many thanks for, for that once again. Uh, and um, uh, I believe um, uh, that um, uh, we can um, uh, start um, uh, the General Assembly with uh, uh, some of the traditional um, uh, elements uh, that are uh, important uh, uh, for FIDE. Uh, and uh, today uh, we are remembering um, our friends, our colleagues uh, uh, that um, mm, regrettably uh, passed away during these few months uh, of um, uh, 2021. Uh, and uh, I would like uh, to ask you uh, for a minute of silence while we'll, uh, we will be uh, seeing um, uh, the names uh, of uh, our friends, our colleagues.
Thank you. Thank you. And um, um, I believe um, that um, while remembering um, our colleagues, our friends who contributed a lot to the development of chess all around the world, uh, we should uh, uh, also continue our own efforts and support uh, uh, all people who uh, are doing their best uh, to uh, develop uh, chess uh, and uh, just even to play chess, including our seniors, our veterans. Uh, uh, so let's do it uh, together. Um, so uh, we are moving uh, to a formal um, uh, part of, um, of our agenda. We need to uh, make sure we have the quorum. So what, what, the, what the results of roll call? Uh, now, uh, based on our uh, latest um, uh, this minute uh, uh, data, we have 116 uh, uh, delegates present um, at the meeting of the General Assembly. Uh, I know that some people may join a bit uh, uh, later, uh, but uh, anyway, we have the quorum uh, for uh, uh, for uh, our General Assembly, uh, and we can start uh, uh, discussing uh, 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 the items uh, on substance. Uh, but bef before that, uh, uh, we should uh, hear uh, for, uh, hear the report of the Constitutional uh, Commission. Uh, I would like to ask um, uh, Robert to reveal uh, uh, to uh, uh, the report of the General Assembly. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, good afternoon and uh, good morning to everybody. In uh, non electoral years, uh, as uh, this one, the Constitutional Commission uh, is uh, charged uh, of uh, two tasks. From one side, uh, it has to check the full uh, regularity of the uh, convened General Assembly. And this is for sure the case. Uh, in accordance with Article 4.16 of the regulations of the General Assembly that you approved last year, uh, it was necessary this year as a consequence of the extraordinary situation uh, of the pandemic uh, to have an online uh, meeting. Uh, currently, there are still uh, not full rules uh, for all aspects uh, of uh, this kind of uh, hybrid or online uh, meeting. Uh, hopefully, uh, today uh, you will approve uh, new electoral rules, uh, and uh, also this aspect will be uh, will find uh, a, a rule. Uh, but uh, in uh, the opinion of the Constitutional Commission, both uh, the system used uh, and by the Council for electronic voting system this year, and the system for roll call is uh, fully correct. Uh, this year, we have no uh, necessity to use a secret vote because there are no elections, so it's even easier to organize an online General Assembly. Uh, as you know, uh, it's not mandatory for not secret votes to have scrutineers, so our suggestion is to not have scrutineers for this uh, General Assembly, but it's of course to you if you believe something different to ask for the appointment of scrutineers. The second task is to check the list of delegates and give a voting rights to member federations. Is a frequently a sad task because for some member federations, unfortunately, was not possible to give this year full voting rights. We have some situations that are, you can read better, in my report uh, that started uh, already some years ago, uh, especially uh, Chess Federation of Côte d'Ivoire, Federation Ivorienne des Echecs. Uh, this year, uh, we had uh, received information about a Supreme Court judgment. So it's in, in uh, Côte d'Ivoire. So it's clear that uh, former president says so uh, cannot uh, be considered anymore as the current president. But as constitutional commissions, we believe that also Mr. Justin Blue, who uh, won the case, uh, still has uh, some problems inside this country. Uh, it's not for uh, his responsibility, but as a constitutional commission, we have to check what is the situation in the Federation. So we uh, requested the, the council to nominate a reverse delegate. The council will take a decision in the near future. But in this moment, uh, we uh, decided that the Cote d'Ivoire cannot have uh, voting rights. A similar situation, unfortunately, we have for Morocco because uh, this, uh, the Council, uh, following uh, this uh, new institute that we introduced the last year, 
nominated uh, Mr. Bashar Kouakli as a, a reverse delegate for the Chess Federation of Morocco. Um, he acted uh, very positively and uh, active chess activities in Morocco this year was uh, in the last months, I believe, uh, very successful. Uh, a new election was organized, but uh, in December, on the 8th of December, but we received a report by Mr. Kouakli that uh, after this election, uh, there were a lot of complaints by more than 10 uh, chess clubs and by organizers and so on. So also for Morocco, unfortunately, we uh, have not the possibility to give a voting right uh, for this general assembly. Then we have other two uh, federations that have some problems, maybe less, uh, a little bit less serious problems, but, but, but uh, there are still some uh, pending cases uh, in South Africa. And so there are no uh, requests, not even requests from South Africa to participate uh, in this uh, General Assembly. And so also, unfortunately, the delegate for uh, South Africa cannot have the right to participate and to vote. Uh, for uh, uh, Pakistan as well, the council nominated uh, um, a, a reverse delegate, Ms. Dana uh, 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 current uh, managing director and deputy chairman of the Finite Management Board. And the uh, situation uh, will be answered, I think, will be fixed in the next months, but still, there are not a legitimate uh, delegate for this federation as well. So, for these four federations, Unfortunately, uh, we couldn't uh, uh, give a right to vote. We had another case submitted to us by the Council about the Chess Federation of Peru, Peruvian Chess Federation. In this case, there is a working group that performed its duty uh, nominated by local authorities. We uh, were informed of uh, two elections, and it seems that uh, currently the last election now is not disputed, there are not controversial cases, but we were also informed that uh, in accordance with national rules, uh, uh, this election must be ratified by uh, local administrative authority. However, we uh, granted uh, uh, on a provisional basis, so no, we, I think we think we still have no the possibility to fully confirm this uh, election, but on provisional basis, uh, we gained the possibility to participate in this uh, General Assembly and to vote uh, to uh, Mr. Jaime Alfredo Ortega Jorge. Uh, finally, uh, not by the Council or by the FIDE office, but we have uh, the mandate to check also ex officio of uh, uh, all the list of delegates. Probably you remember that uh, last year, uh, we uh, had to exclude some uh, delegates because they had no citizenship nor uh, residence in the country that uh, uh, whose federation were represent. But in accordance with Article 17.6 of the FIDE Charter, uh, there are, this is just one of the possible conditions. There's another condition, so at least one year of experience as an office holder over a member federation. So this year we checked some countries the, whose delegates uh, were are not uh, the residents or citizenship of uh, the country we represent. However, they have these uh, alternative conditions. So for more than one year, they uh, were office holders of our federation. So we not excluded the other federations. And finally, we know that is pending a case in front of the Council about U.S. Virgin Island Chess Federation, but this case doesn't concern the right to vote in this in this General Assembly. So that's it's all for what concerns uh, the legitimacy of participants in 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 today meeting. Uh, finally, I can anticipate that our task was also to give an advisory opinion about uh, changes in the handbook, uh, interpretation of the handbook. So I can already anticipate that uh, our judgment, our evaluation is very positive for what concerns uh, electoral rules, uh, ethics and disciplinary code, finance, and uh, also uh, internal uh, rules of the General Assembly. Constitutional Commission, of course, was uh, 
cooperating with uh, the task force charged to modify this rule. I personally was charged of the task of drafting electoral rules. And uh, we really believe that this could be, uh, if you will approve today, we would strongly, strongly support this, uh, uh, another very important step forward in the direction of the better, more developed system and uh, in, of rules in FIDE in respect of rule of law. Uh, we know that there is also a request to change uh, the statute and a proposal submitted by Papua New Guinea HS Federation. Well, uh, we cannot go on the merit in, the, in your discussion, but we have to underline that this will be a radical change in our FIDE Charter and changes in the Charter that to be pondered very well. And uh, I, we don't think in this moment this could be fully possible. So our suggestion is to go maybe deeper in uh, the subject matter Papua New Guinea Chess Federation is underlying. But in this moment, uh, we believe it would be very, very difficult to approve this radical change in our uh, FIDE charter. And finally, we delivered uh, an interpretation about Article 20.11 of the FIDE charter about uh, the possibility for members of the council to uh, make for FIDE activities that are not the same over participation in the council meetings. And in this case, in our opinion, the charter is clear to give the possibility also to be paid for these activities. So this, that's all for our, for our preliminary tasks. Of course, we uh, are here also to answer all your questions about uh, electoral rules changes of uh, the, um, the handbook. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thanks a lot, uh, uh, Roberto. Uh, we will uh, have uh, a separate item on electoral rules uh, uh, on our agenda a bit later. Uh, so now I'd like to ask uh, if there are any questions uh, or objections uh, regarding uh, uh, the um, decisions of the Constitutional Commission um, uh, regarding um, the eligibility uh, to uh, participate uh, at, uh, at the General um, Assembly meeting. Uh, um, regarding those uh, federations and questions that have been uh, described by uh, Roberto. Um, I guess there are no uh, questions uh, or objections, so we uh, stay with uh, uh, this decision uh, and uh, um, uh, also, we, uh, uh, I believe, uh, should uh, support um, the uh, recommendation of the, of the Constitutional Commission not to have uh, scrutiners, uh, as we do not have any secret uh, uh, voting uh, here, uh, and we will just count votes based on the electronic uh, uh, system results uh, that will be provided by, uh, by the office right after uh, voting procedures uh, for each particular uh, section of uh, our uh, agenda. So um, if uh, there are no uh, objections, I will move to the report of uh, FIDE uh, president. Um, uh, and, uh, Mr. Uh, president, sorry, yes, sorry, yes there is a question. Mr. Uh, Mr. Prokhorov, please. Prokhorov, can you switch on your microphone and make your interve intervention? No? Okay, maybe later yeah, if uh, needed. So let me uh, move to the report of, <clears throat> of the FIDE president. Uh, and um, uh, I would like to start uh, with uh, thanking all of you for uh, going uh, uh, through this difficult year uh, with uh, lots of uh, activities, contributions, uh, lots of projects uh, conducted at the national, uh, zonal, regional, um, uh, continental, uh, and uh, uh, global uh, level. Uh, you all worked uh, hard uh, to achieve the best possible result despite the pandemic, uh, uh, despite the limitations uh, that it created uh, for uh, continuing uh, chess activities. Uh, uh, but I think uh, overall it was a successful year uh, and uh, we gained uh, much more than we uh, lost in terms of both opportunities and uh, uh, results. Uh, we are uh, not fully back uh, to uh, normal uh, and there were many events, uh, especially non-major events that have been postponed uh, until 2022. 
uh, from this uh, year, but uh, I would like to state that uh, we are back uh, to normal in terms of uh, conducting uh, our major uh, uh, feed official events. Uh, um, uh, and. Um, we uh, have been able uh, uh, to uh, run um, uh, all events of the world championship cycles, uh, uh, including uh, the candidates to completion of the candidates uh, tournament and then the world championship uh, match, of course. Uh, also, also um, the Grand, Women Grand Prix uh, cycle had, had been completed. Uh, the new uh, world championship cycle had been started with, uh, uh, of course, uh, zonal uh, uh, events, continental events, uh, and the World Cup in Sochi uh, this uh, summer. Uh, we <clears throat> had uh, a Grand Swiss tournament in Riga, uh, and I would like to thank uh, Latvian authorities and Dan Rizin for um, uh, their um, uh, help to uh, do this, uh, and uh, we uh, had a successful event uh, uh, that um, uh, made it possible to, uh, to run smoothly through the World Championship uh, cycle. Uh, we had the world, Women uh, World Team um, uh, Championship uh, in Spain, uh, Sieges, uh, uh, in the new format. Uh, and uh, now we are having a World Rapid and Breathe Championships uh, here in uh, Poland, in Warsaw. Uh, also, uh, as a part of our mixed activities, uh, we had um, the second edition of the FIDE Online Olympiad, uh, where we had the participation of uh, almost the same number of countries, uh, uh, almost 160. Uh, the uh, slight deviation from the uh, 20, uh, 20 numbers is due to the fact that in some countries during exactly the same period there were national uh, events uh, that didn't allow teams to participate in the uh, feed in line Olympiad. Uh, and um, one of the proposals we have on the uh, table uh, for the future uh, is uh, while having our over the board uh, feed Olympiads uh, in uh, uh, even years uh, to uh, continue with online Olympiads in odd years. Uh, uh, as uh, many um, uh, countries, many member federations uh, liked uh, this format uh, and uh, will be happy to, uh, to proceed with, uh, uh, with this uh, project. <clears throat> Uh, and, uh, uh, of course, we uh, did a lot to prepare uh, the calendar uh, for uh, the next year. Uh, it took a lot of effort uh, to find hosts, to find sponsors. There are still some uh, things missing, uh, but uh, we are going to have our FIDE Olympiad uh, uh, in Russia uh, next year, uh, in July, August next year, including uh, the competition for uh, players with disabilities in Hantemansisk, uh, starting on 20th of July, International Chess Day, uh, and then uh, the traditional uh, part starting in Moscow, 26th of uh, July. Uh, in the same uh, period of time, we'll have uh, FIDE Congress uh, uh, with physical presence. Uh, uh, we expect all of you uh, to um, come to Moscow uh, and uh, start working uh, uh, on the 27th of July, and it's also the election year, so many things that have to be prepared uh, uh, properly. <clears throat> uh, a second part of our activities uh, uh, was devoted uh, to uh, uh, all kinds of uh, professional training um, uh, projects uh, uh, for coaches, for arbiters, for organizers, um, uh, uh, for national federations uh, uh, in the context of capacity uh, building. Uh, and uh, I believe uh, that uh, uh, by doing this, uh, we were able not to uh, uh, not to just become uh, slaves of the limitations uh, uh, created by the pandemic, uh, but to uh, progress with our chess activities. So we have many new uh, uh, good uh, uh, trainers, arbiters, um, uh, organizers uh, who will continue running uh, chess activities uh, around the world. Uh, and um, uh, I would like to thank everyone who was involved in that, including on the continental uh, and regional uh, level uh, uh, in, the, uh, in the context of our collaboration with continents. And uh, we devoted a substantial part of our development fund to those activities by also supporting uh, the uh, tournaments uh, organized uh, at, uh, at the continental uh, and uh, regional and national um, uh, levels. Uh, 
uh, including uh, a new program to support open tournaments um, uh, that uh, otherwise would not be uh, held um, um, uh, as a part of the chess tradition. We will continue this project uh, next, um, uh, next year. Uh, we do believe that uh, this year um, uh, was also a success story in terms of improving uh, our uh, financial situation, uh, and it was uh, both due to the uh, fact that we were able to, um, uh, to uh, utilize opportunities uh, created by our uh, major uh, FIDE events, in particular World Championship match in uh, Dubai, where Expo uh, organizers uh, our uh, very good partners uh, uh, provided us with, with the bulk of funding, but allowing uh, us also to uh, attract additional um, uh, sponsorship. Uh, and uh, as a result of that, uh, of course, uh, Zhu Chen will report on, on that uh, a bit uh, later. We have very solid uh, financial situation uh, and uh, good prospects uh, for, uh, for the future. Also, we were able to increase our human capacity and uh, uh, have more people around working, if not full time, uh, almost full time, and that uh, um, makes it possible to uh, improve both marketing side of uh, our um, uh, of our activities uh, uh, and uh, organize events uh, properly uh, around uh, uh, the world. Also, uh, working with national federations and uh, all other partners uh, on a professional uh, basis. Uh, and uh, I truly believe that we should continue building this human capacity, not just in FIDE, not just in the central office, uh, which is, of course, uh, uh, allocated uh, also in many countries, uh, but uh, also at all other levels, including uh, commissions uh, and um, uh, other uh, bodies. Uh, that also helped us to, to increase visibility of uh, what we are doing. Uh, our uh, social uh, networks, our presence uh, in media, uh, including uh, TV, especially during the match, uh, was much uh, better than before. We are still far away from the ideal and uh, still uh, lots to be done, but uh, I think we are on the right uh, track and uh, we are ready to share best practices uh, with you, with uh, national federations, uh, everyone who is interested uh, uh, and uh, make sure that uh, helps developing chess uh, in each particular uh, location. <clears throat> Well, there are many lessons uh, uh, as well, uh, and um, uh, still both in terms of the um, major events uh, and others, uh, our calendar is not perfect. We will continue to uh, improve it. Uh, uh, we need to be um, uh, more proactive with marketing uh, at uh, national and regional uh, level together, uh, finding uh, new uh, sponsors, new partners uh, uh, locally. Uh, we have many things still to improve in the regulations, uh, uh, including uh, anti-cheating uh, and others, but we uh, have introduced new rules uh, that will start working uh, next uh, uh, year uh, properly, uh, so we'll have improvements already, uh, but we will learn more and more and uh, we uh, shall not stop on that. And uh, as Roberto mentioned, uh, uh, we have some important pieces of regulations today to improve uh, at the General Assembly meeting, including uh, electoral rules, uh, ethics and disciplinary code, uh, uh, and a couple of um, others. Um, and uh, now uh, let me turn to the uh, uh, last but not the least important uh, part of um, uh, our uh, activities, uh, which is uh, social uh, part, uh, including such major projects uh, as educational chess uh, and uh, based on the collaboration with uh, European Chess Union, uh, other continental uh, associations, uh, national federations, we have been able uh, to collect best practices, analyze those, uh, create uh, uh, methodological tools um, uh, for um, uh, training uh, the teachers, uh, a few other things. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, we are uh, starting the new, uh, uh, new uh, project uh, on a proactive uh, basis uh, when I visit countries uh, in different parts of the world uh, uh, and uh, meeting with uh, uh, heads of governments, uh, other people. Uh, this is one of the most important topics uh, that is being discussed um, everywhere. Uh, also, we uh, had uh, much more active work uh, of uh, social uh, commission uh, under the coordination of um, our managing director uh, 
uh, including uh, chess for inmates, for prisoners, uh, chess for refugees, um, uh, chess for kids with uh, autistic spectrum disorder. Uh, uh, and uh, we believe that, uh, that the pilot projects we had uh, uh, in uh, these areas uh, should be followed up uh, by, uh, by uh, uh, extended uh, projects uh, that will involve more and more countries around the world. I would like to thank also our Disabled Commission and uh, Akaki Ashvili, who was coordinating these activities for uh, a proactive approach uh, towards uh, expansion of uh, chess for uh, players with disabilities. Uh, uh, and um, uh, we had online activities. Uh, uh, we know now how many people uh, are playing around the world uh, with different kinds of disabilities. And we will have first ever Olympiad uh, for teams uh, of players with disabilities next year in uh, Hantemansisk. Uh, uh, and I would like to thank our development commission for continuous uh, efforts uh, to work with uh, national federations to fund uh, their important uh, projects, uh, also to uh, help them to improve um, their institutional capacity. Uh, and, uh, to, uh, uh, and also, I would like to note uh, that the collaboration with other commissions uh, has been started uh, so that uh, we run our project more efficiently, know what uh, each one is uh, doing, uh, and this helps us uh, uh, to uh, improve uh, uh, both um, the work of FIDE itself, uh, but more importantly, the results uh, for um, the chess uh, community. And um, uh, based on what I just mentioned, let me um, show uh, a short video uh, describing our social uh, projects. We uh, announced uh, 2022 the year of uh, uh, women chess. Sometimes feel that we live in the man's world and we do have kind of a glass ceiling, but um... girls are equal.
Uh, thank you. I think that was uh, more informative than my long uh, speech. <laughs> so um, uh, I believe that's a good way to present uh, what we are uh, doing. And in the end, I would like uh, to thank all our partners, sponsors and um, uh, charity givers, uh, uh, all who provided us support uh, during this uh, difficult year uh, at uh, various uh, levels of our activities, tournaments, um, uh, projects. Uh, uh, Emil Sotovsky will tell you about some of the, uh, uh, of the partners um, uh, a bit later when we will discuss major uh, events, uh, but uh, many thanks to uh, all uh, uh, who help us uh, to bring chess forward. Uh, and again, uh, uh, thank you, uh, all of you, uh, for uh, your uh, contribution uh, and uh, for joining today the General Assembly meeting. So uh, let's uh, move forward and I'm uh, open to your um, questions or comments, uh, uh, any remarks you want to make. Please, the floor is open. Unless uh, anyone uh, wants to intervene at this point, uh, no, no hands uh, have been raised uh, until now. Uh, I suggest that uh, we can move to the next uh, item and if uh, questions will rise um, during uh, the discussions, uh, uh, we can uh, always come back to any of the subjects uh, I mentioned uh, during my uh, presentation in my report. Uh, so uh, let me turn to item uh, 2.1, report of the FIDE Treasurer. Uh, um, it's Annex 2.1 uh, change. The floor is yours. Dear Mr. President, dear council members, dear delegates, I'd like to use this opportunity to express my sincere thanks to Polish government and the Polish Chess Federation and the sponsors for their kind support <coughs> of World Rabbit and Great Championship in a very short notice. While also hosting the General Assembly meeting, council meeting, and the zona meetings. And now let me present you the financial report. Let's start with the financial statement for the 2020 financial year. You all received the 2020 financial statement and the opinion of our audit, ENY, and I hope that you all had a, a opportunity to analyze the document. As a result, I will just highlight the most important element. First and foremost, simply to say that 2020 was an unusual year, and it's uh, it unprecedented in modern history not only for chess world, but also for all aspects of our lives. Within just a few weeks after you approved the annual budget at the Abu Dhabi Congress in February, the COVID-19 crisis became obvious, with the world completely froze because of the lockdowns. It became clear to us that we are losing most of our income our fee income and the income from events budgeted for the year, about 3 million between these two sections. And that is almost half of our budgeted income. In this environment, we decide to take a very conservative view on how we should run fee finances. Starting from April, we were implementing significant cost reduction measures. Administrative costs were decreased to bare minimal, including payroll cut, travel cancellations, and the reduction of other administrative expenses. I made my proposal to review the budget at the council meeting in June, and I'm grateful that the council that they supported me. As you can see from this slide, 
the budget was cut by as much as almost 40%. In terms of financial results for the year, we had lost about 200,000 euros. And I think you agree with me that uh, given the circumstances, this is not a bad result at all. I want to thank our president for doing excellent job in bringing sponsorship money. As you can see from the slide, general sponsorship together with sponsorship for events amounted for about 75% of feeder income. This allowed us to confidently survive the COVID-19 crisis on our own. Unlikely most of our peer international sports federations, we had to appear for, or they had appeared for emergency role grants or other form of support or from the International Olympic Committee or government. As always, one of our priority in 2020 was support of continental and the national chess federations from the FIDE Development Fund. Although it was a very difficult financial year for FIDE, we nevertheless managed to allocate 1 million euro for continental and the national chess federations. Understandably, not all of this money was drawn because it was extremely difficult for continental and the national chess federations to organize their activities due to the COVID-19 crisis. Nonetheless, with the support of the development fund, a lot of good projects has been executed, which hopefully will have a positive impact on chess development around the globe. That's all regarding 2020 financial statements now. Uh, since we are in a very last days of 2021, and I received many questions from the delegates about uh, current year. So let's have a brief look of our performance in 2021. Next slide, please. The most important development for 2021 is that due to ongoing pandemic, we managed to organize each and every of most important event. World Championship March, Candidate, Open and the Women World, World Cups, Open and the Women Grand Suisse, Women World Team Championship, the last stage of Women Grand Prix, and now here in Warsaw, World Rabbit and Bridge Championship. I think this is amazing. And that was extremely difficult task that required not only unusual organizational routine, but also enormous work to provide the safe environment for players, arbiters, organizers, commentators, volunteers, and everybody else involved in our tournament. This may be difficult to understand from the outside, but believe me, I know firsthand the amount of work that was required to develop and enforce health protocols, as well as pursue health authorities in various countries to allow us to stage the tournament. And I'm extremely proud of my colleagues who have done this work superbly. So I want to thank you, Mr. President, Dana, Lukas, Emil, David, Martinov, Wozen, Anton, Maxine, Sava, Kema, and the many, many of you for the great job. In terms of budget performance this year, we estimated a net income of close to 2 million euros. The FIDE Reserve Fund or organizational net worth will be about 3 million euros by the conclude of the year. Our cash balance is estimated to reach more than 6 million euros by the end of the year. Despite the current pandemic, this is pretty steady safety net that enable us to look forward with 
optimism. Next slide, please. I would like to draw your attention to another development, which I think is particularly important, namely that we manage to disclose true commercial potential of a major chess tournament. On this slide, you can see the numbers for FIDE income over the last 10 years, since 2012 which constantly is the year when FIDE gave away to Argon the right to organize the most important event of World Championship cycle. As you remember, one of our initiative of the current administration was getting back the right to stage the World Championship cycle. And let's have a look what it gave to us. As you can see from the table, the income from the year or championship match alone is higher than the income from all events during any of the prior years. And this year's total income from event is greater than the total annual gross income for any year prior to 2019. And this is not even mentioning that in previous years, the biggest event income was coming from Olympiad, which we did not have this year. Well, I think this number speak for themselves. And I think they are very convincing, especially when compared with uh, poultry 200,000 euros in royalty that we were receiving from watches. So thank you very much for your attention and uh, I'm happy to take your questions. Uh, yeah, thank you, Cheng. Before we uh, will um, uh, go to questions, I'd like to ask Dana maybe to uh, comment on the uh, development part of, uh, of the uh, 2021, uh, not the budget, but 2021. Um, what, what are the overall the uh, yes. the, the yes. overall situation yes. with yes. the yes. continental and national federations yes, yes. 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 as you probably uh, distinguished uh, uh, delegates uh, might know the overall allocation for the development fund uh, has been 1 million euros for this year uh, basically two major uh, parts uh, 400 euros for the continents for the cont for four continents 1000 for each and uh, the rest uh, for the federations, for national federations. The federations have been very active. They have been um, approaching FIDE with their requests, uh, mainly implementing the events, uh, which is, uh, uh, which has the two sides of the story. One, uh, that means that uh, uh, federations have overcome the strong COVID re uh, uh, restrictions and uh, the active chess life has come back with the tournaments and events. From the other side, of course, we would be uh, willing to encourage uh, the federations to come up also with other kinds of initiatives. And that is why if you would uh, uh, look at the draft budget for the next year, for the 2022, you will see that additional half a million has been uh, planned there for various uh, social initiatives um, uh, that we hope uh, will come from uh, the national federations, from the zones, from the cont continents will be happy to support. And there was also one question um, uh, mentioned in the chat after the pres president's pres presentation on the social initiatives. What about the social uh, projects uh, like uh, ASD uh, in Israel, that was the particular case. So FIDE is willing to support such kind of initiatives and uh, particularly in this case, uh, two conferences were organized by FIDE to reach out to federations to find out what the projects are in, uh, in, uh, in place already, because we are willing to build up the cooperation network. So uh, Anastasia, Anastasia Sorokina, who is the leader of this particular project will reach out to you. And I hope that we will be managed, uh, able to support this initiative uh, as well. Um, so uh, that's, that's for the national federations, for the continents, uh, as we were discussing two days ago in the zonal, uh, zonal um, uh, meeting, uh, we would be willing that the continents really exhaust the allocation 
for them. It's not much, it's 100,000 euros. And I'm pretty sure that uh, the need for the support at uh, the national level is strong. And uh, um, even though we understand that the restrictions are still strong, uh, the COVID uh, does put the obstacles in place, we would be willing that the continents really use this development money. It's in the interest of ours to invest in the development uh, so that the chess life becomes more active and, uh, and better. <clears throat> Thanks a lot. Okay, the floor is open for questions uh, or comments on uh, uh, the Fida Treasures report, please. Mm, I believe there are no questions or comments. Okay, good. So, thanks a lot. Uh, we uh, go now to the Verification uh, Commission's report uh, of Mr. Mazus and uh, Alan Priest uh, is also here, I think. Uh, so, uh, who starts? Uh, we will start. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. President. Uh, dear participants, dear delegates, um, I just would like to, to say few words about uh, our report. Uh, later on, um, Alan will go into more details. Uh, just to say that the, um, on the whole, the external auditor was satisfied with uh, our um, financial statement. Uh, we have noted, how, however, that the report of um, the external auditor was late uh, that delayed also the report of the Verification Commission. Uh, there is something also to note, the uh, dues from federations has, uh, has declined si significantly due to the efforts that were made by the uh, finance uh, management in uh, FIDE. Uh, one has got also to make um, uh, a, a remark, um, if we look at the income uh, um, on a, a whole basis, uh, the, our, our um, traditional um, revenue, that means coming from chess, uh, was uh, somewhere like uh, more than 95% uh, of the total. Uh, in 2020, uh, they did represent only 48%. Uh, that means that uh, FIDE was able to have a um, new um, source of uh, uh, income. Uh, and this is uh, mostly donations and sponsorship. Um, in, uh, if we compare to 2019 with uh, 2020, uh, the expenses were cut by 38%. The development fund has been most affected, uh, the most uh, affected um, expense item. Uh, in fact, it declined from 1,893,000 to 8,018. Um, this is a big decline, but it had to, 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 to do with the uh, uh, FIDE has had, uh, of course, less income. Uh, never, nevertheless, the um, expense, the um, uh, amount of expenses devoted to uh, development were uh, huge compared to other uh, uh, expenses and they are still a major component of uh, FIDE costs. Um, what else? Uh, in, uh, uh, in fact, each year, um, each year in our report, we make recommendations. Uh, we can say that uh, they were put by uh, FIDE into praxis, um, almost all, all, all of them. There was one also which um, 
PDA now is coming with uh, a recommendation. Uh, this is the um, the um, draft report or the draft project on nepotism. Uh, we just uh, received it, um, I think, one a month ago, and the verification uh, commission approves it. Uh, yeah, we had uh, also different recommendations and uh, for uh, 2019 and uh, uh, tw tw and 2020. Um, and I'd like you to permit, Mr. President, the. Uh, Alan Priest to go into more details, if you agree. Uh, uh, thank you, Chairman. Uh, uh, Mr. Priest, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. President, and thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, greetings from the great state of Kentucky in the middle of the United States of America. Uh, for those of you who have uh, <clears throat> noticed in uh, the catastrophe that happened here with tornado damage. Um, uh, we appreciate the concerns that have been expressed from around the world to our folks here in our state. Um, if you could put the report back up on the screen, please, um, or I can share my screen and show it. I'd like to go through, yeah, yes, thank you very much. Go up several pages up to the section that says three, which will show the recommendations, please. A little further, thank you. A little further, uh, keep going up. There we go, stop right there. Oop. Go down to where it says section three. We're still going up. Uh, stop there, that's it. Okay, um, first, as has been mentioned, the auditor's report, um, uh, issued what, what we call, I'm an auditor by profession. So the auditor's report uh, w was what we have a technical term for, we call it, call it an unqualified opinion. That's the type of opinion you want to have. It means the auditor did not find anything that uh, caused them to, to question in any material way the numbers that FIDE had presented in its, in its financial statements. The auditor is not saying that the numbers are perfect. Um, they, odds are pretty good they're not perfect, that there is an error in there somewhere, um, something in the wrong category or something missed. Um, that's just the nature of dealing with financial statements. But the auditor is saying that the way the information is presented is, um, is adequate so that the opinion that a reader who reads the financial statements would uh, will still come to the appropriate conclusion about the financial condition of FIDE. So uh, that's the type of, of audit opinion that you want. The other thing that they produce is a uh, is a in Swiss accounting rules. It's called a statutory report report that was not an annex to your packet. It's, it's also called a management letter where they note issues they did with uh, issues that they incurred with the audit and um, items that they uh, want to mention. Um, the, the verification commission has access to that letter as well. And the auditor in that letter did not uh, express any other concerns that uh, that were significant. Um, they had mentioned some things in the prior year, and that was part of our, our recommendations when we looked at the 2019 financial statements, which is what I'll go through right now. Um, these were in our report last year, and we wanted the General Assembly to be able to see uh, how FIDE had responded to the Verification Commission's recommendations. So the first one uh, is, is rather important. Um, prior to a couple of years ago, the FIDE financial statements were done um, under its basically its own form of accounting. And, and the 
there was a change adopted to use the standard Swiss accounting standards. And then also the auditor's role changed. The auditor had been doing a, a limited scope audit and it was changed so that they would do a full scope audit. One of the best ways to describe the difference in the limited scope audit, the auditor asks questions of management. In the full scope audit, they do things like verify those items. So um, you ask in the limited scope role, they would ask management, is there money in the bank? Uh, in the full scope, they write to the bank and ask how much money is in the bank. So it's, it's very much more, uh, there's very much more assurance that comes from the full scope audit. It's more expensive to do, but it is certainly our recommendation that that, that type of audit be continued, even though it's more expensive, because it's very important to the credibility of FIDE, uh, particularly when you're going out and trying to raise money from contributors. Contributors want to know that their money is being spent uh, wisely and being spent prudently. And that full scope audit helps. So the uh, 2020 financial statements were done as we had recommended uh, and as the 2019 had been done and a full scope audit was conducted. So that was very important. Um, in recommendation number two, this is something that's more important to us accountants than it is to anybody else. But a cash flow statement is, is important. Um, if you only look at cash in the bank at the end of the year, it doesn't necessarily tell you how well the organization has done because you can pump up the amount of cash at the end of the year simply by not paying your bills or by borrowing it. And, and if you borrow from someone else, you've got to pay it back. So the cash flow statement shows where money has come from and where money has gone. And it, it helps a reader see if there have been artificial measures taken to make the cash balance higher. So we have recommended that that cash flow statement be done. Um, it was done for 2020. Um, it was not included in the audit of financial statement because the audit engagement had already been signed by the time our recommendations were final and it had not been included in the auditor scope. So, um, but, but it was prepared and it was in the financial statement. So that's, that's important. We'll come back to that as one of our recommendations for 2020. If you could scroll down to recommendation number three on the next page, please. There we go, thank you. Um, the, the, the accounting system for FIDE was a custom system largely built on spreadsheets in Greece. And while it has served adequately for FIDE's needs, uh, those needs are changing. And we had made a recommendation last year from the Verification Commission that um, that an accounting program, moving to a more standard, less customized accounting program should be considered. Um, that, that was not adopted uh, due to lack of time remaining from the time our recommendations got made. But it is, as we mentioned here in our response, the FIDE team indicated the change in the accounting program is planned um, there is a need for FIDE in Switzerland to adapt value-added tax accounting rules under Swiss law, and that's going to necessitate a change in the accounting program to be able to do that. The, the, the FIDE accounting is rather complex because FIDE uses multiple currencies, um, a lot of small transactions um, in the international banking system, um, just multiple, uh, 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 there's, there's a lot of complexity, people in multiple countries using it, using multiple languages. So it, there are challenges with getting a 
new accounting program. Um, it's not going to likely happen in 2021 because it hasn't yet. And we're right here at the end of the year. That's probably a 2023 project uh, to get it fully implemented. And it may take longer than that. But there is a I, I think a commitment on the part of FIDE management to make that change, which would be a good one. Uh, in 2019, the auditor in that management letter had raised a question about the proper documentation of expenses. There were some expenses in 2018 and 19 that lacked full documentation. Um, it was clear the money had been transferred to various people. Um, receipts for those had not fully been received on a timely basis. And so our recommendation had been for someone to uh, be appointed to review all those expense reports and, and even delay making reimbursements until all the proper documentation had been received, including expense reports of the president. The president does not stand above uh, the, the rules here. And um, FIDE management reported to us, and we saw evidence that all expense reports, including those of the president, are now being approved in accordance with our recommendation. This is a good step. Um, recommendation number five that we had was the uh, Planning and Development Commission. Um, make sure that all of their information was readily available and easily available on the FIDE website. Um, that has been accomplished. The uh, grant requirements, applications, forms, um, even as recommendation number six, the development grants that are made, um, all of those are up on the website in the development commission. Um, and, and they went through that extensively in the zonal council meeting, but the, there is a robust website for the planning and development commission and all of that information is available out there. And we think that is a very good step toward uh, helping people uh, obtain grants and through the Development Commission, but also for donors and for member federations to see how those dollars are being, being used. Um, likewise, in the entrance interest of transparency so that people will know what, uh, where money is being spent, we had made a recommendation that the audit uh, audited financial statements should be posted in a way that they're easily to be found on the FIDE website. While those audits had been uh, on the website as annexes for general assembly materials, that's uh, not the easiest way to find it. And uh, so we had recommended that FIDE post its audited financial statements on a website. And uh, I'm pleased to report that the last 10 years of audited financial statements have been posted to the FIDE website and are easily available now. If we could go to the next page, please. Thank you. And then our final recommendation from 2020, um, there was an issue with a grant that FIDE had received that had very uh, serious restrictions around it. If you could Scroll up just a smidge, uh, just a little, so I can see. There we go, right there. Thank you. Um, there, there had been a grant that had been very restricted, and FIDE was essentially just serving as a pass-through for it, meaning the money, when FIDE accepted it, was designated to go to a specific individual program, individual's program that FIDE was not administering. Um, that, that was a concern of, of the commission that this money was, um, that FIDE was just serving as a, as a conduit, if you will, a pass-through entity. Um, and FIDE was not monitoring what was happening with that program and not responsible for it. So our recommendation was that FIDE not accept grants of that nature. Um, there were contractual obligations under it that carried forward into 2020 and 2021. Um, so FIDE continued to administer that contract because it had an obligation to do so, but uh, it has since adopted a policy not to accept 
future grants that are restricted to the benefit of specific individuals or organizations. It's certainly fine, I think, in the commit commission's opinion for FIDE to accept grants for a for a specific purpose, like the autism program, for example, that if you had a donor who wanted to support that, but that that program would be a FIDE program or that FIDE would be providing funding to affiliated organizations or federations to support FIDE's program in that area. So those were our recommendations for based on the 2019 financial statements that largely had been adopted. And, and in some instances, like the accounting program, we understood where the delays were. So we had recommendations, nine of them, uh, based on our current year work that was focused on the 2020 financial statements. Um, once again, we think the cash flow statement is very important. There are two ways to do it. Uh, again, for the folks who are really into accounting, um, you'll, you'll understand this. For those who aren't, this is going to be um, a bit esoteric, but there are two ways to do it. There's an indirect method and a direct method. The direct method provides more information, and we recommend that. It does take more time to prepare, and it is more complex, but it, it provides much more information. So we encourage FIDE to continue to put cash flow statements and have the auditor look at them. And further, we recommend moving to the direct cash flow statement. Same, same here in recommendation number two, that the auditor engagement should be expanded to include the cash flow statement. Um, another issue with the auditor, and it was alluded to earlier by Chairman Mazus, is that, that the verification, the, the Verification Commission needs to have adequate time to review this material. Um, if you saw it was attached as an annex, the final report date for the audit was 27 July. Um, 27 July is far too late to get finished. And um, we had a problem with the auditor finishing late in 2019. Um, we understood the issues there. Whoop, we have gone down far too far. We understood the issues related to that problem. Um, and, and there we go. Whoop. There, thank you. Uh, we understood why there were some issues related to uh, 2019. It was in the middle of the pandemic when they were doing work in 2020 and everyone was trying to figure out what to do. Um, there was, however, we expressed that concern deeply to the auditors. They committed to getting done on a much more timely basis, and yet they were unsuccessful in doing so. Um, so we have recommended that management be very, very clear. Um, the Verification Commission does meet with the auditor prior to the audit beginning, and we will make it clear again, we simply must have their work done on a more timely basis. Now, they did say there was an issue related to that, um, which we'll talk about in recommendation number five. Because of the problem we've been having with the auditor, um, the FIDE management team expressed a desire to consider looking at other auditors. And we supported that uh, in our recommendation number four. Um, I do not believe based on the zonal council meeting the other day, my understanding is that that change in auditor will not happen for the 2021 financial statements. The process that um, international firms are going through to for their client acceptance procedures are lengthy um, and, and FIDE has had some issues with that in the past. Um, also because FIDE does have offices in multiple countries the audit firm must be able to work in multiple countries. So we have to have an audit firm that's able to be in, in um, certainly in Moscow and then also in Luzon and in some other countries in Europe as well. So um, management would like to make that change. Uh, the Verification Commission, when we considered that, and under the charter, the Verification Commission will review 
audit proposals and make a recommendation as to which auditor to select. It's, it will certainly be finally the choice of management and the choice of the General Assembly. But under the new charter, the Verification Commission has a role to play in that uh, as the Verification Commission basically serves as the audit committee, the independent audit committee for FIDE. And so we did support management's desire to look at other auditors. That does not mean the auditor will change. It's very like, it's very possible that um, Ernst & Young could be selected to continue. But again, they've got to be more timely um, for us to be able to continue that relationship. Um, one of the reasons they said that they were slow is our recommendation number five. Um, there were a number of sponsorship contracts that were, uh, did not exist in English. They only existed in Russian. Um, now there's a reason for that. They were uh, with Russian government agencies or Russian um, bodies that demanded Russian language documents, but the organization's business language, according to the charter, is English, and therefore um, the auditor pointed out that they had to take contracts to their Moscow office and use their staff to translate those documents. Um, so our recommendation is that uh, all FIDE contracts should be prepared either done in English, which is the business language of the organization, or when a body insists on language, um, on contract language in some other language than English that FIDE prepare a dual language version. So there would be the, the uh, for example, a Russian document and then side by side would be the English document that FIDE would prepare so that all of us could, uh, uh, would have the ability to, to read that document. Um, our sixth recommendation is that uh, the FIDE should complete the development of a nepotism policy. Um, this came up in a couple of years ago when there was a, a relative hired and for a completely different role and they weren't working under um, under the supervision of a relative who was already on the ruling body of FIDE, but it raised the question of, did we have a policy? And we did not. So the, the FIDE management has developed that policy and as Chairman Mazuz, they circulated to, to us, I believe it was on the 15th of December. And uh, we, as the Verification Commission have had a chance to review that policy and, uh, and it, it looks, it looks adequate. The, it does not prevent the hiring of family members. It requires a, it defines who relatives are and it requires that um, a relative not supervise their relative. So they would not be uh, working directly for uh, the other relative or be involved in hiring that relative. It also has a provision that says if two people who are already in FIDE decide to become relatives, what will happen? And uh, that management will, there, there's an obligation to report those relationships and for management to evaluate and make sure that we, we don't have a, a relative supervising another relative. Um, again, a policy like that is just a basic policy. It's good for the internal control in the organization. And um, it's one that is a good governance policy. So it's, uh, I think we'll be able to report next year that that recommendation will have been adopted. Um, there, there was an issue brought to our attention and, and management has been working on this, um, but there was a problem with accessing the PayPal account. Um, PayPal has procedures to work through. They are difficult to work through sometimes when you're changing things. And the PayPal account had been set up with prior management uh, as the personal access to it. Um, that had to be changed. And even with the cooperation of the prior management person, it just took a while. So that finally got changed to a person currently involved in management, but the account had been linked to 
a bank account which has now been closed and getting feed aid to, I'm sorry, getting PayPal to change to the current bank account um, that feed aid is using is, uh, has been a much more complex task than one might think it should be. So our recommendation is FIDE just continue to be working on it, make it a high priority to sort that situation out. Um, we are aware, um, management has reported to us that they're using the payroll, uh, I'm sorry, the PayPal account funds to make payments back out to other people. Um, but the practice typically had been to take these small payments that come in through PayPal and then move them into the normal bank accounts of the organization. And they've not been able to do that for a bit. Recommendation number eight, the auditor did mention that uh, it was their opinion that FIDE uh, was now subject to Swiss value added tax rules and needed to file returns um, for several years. Uh, that was a concern of the verification commission as to was there a problem with uh, a delay in filing? And the auditor informed us that under Swiss law, there's no penalty for filing a return late. Um, you just need to get it filed. The good news is that getting the uh, returns done properly actually should result in a refund of value-added taxes that FIDE has paid in the past to FIDE uh, because of the FIDE's nonprofit tax status in Switzerland. So um, it, it is a fairly large project. Management has informed us that they've engaged or been in the process of, and I think now engaged, an, an accounting firm in Switzerland to do, uh, to do that. Um, and, and it's going to take a bit to get it resolved, but that is, appears to be in the works. And then finally, um, the auditor had raised a concern about certain sponsorship contracts. And these were general donation contracts that contained a provision, for example, to have an, a small ad on the FIDE website that said so-and-so was a sponsor of FIDE. Um, the, this practice had been going on for several years and the auditor had never raised the point. Uh, and then raise the point in this particular year, wanting to uh, change the time period when certain revenues were recognized from those contracts. FIDE's practice has been to recognize the revenue from donations and general sponsorships when they're received. Uh, event sponsorship money has been recognized when the event is completed, but general donations have been recognized in the beginning. Um, it, it seems to, it seemed to the commission that the answer to resolve this problem would be just to make the contracts more specific and assign values to some of these different components. Um, in the international accounting community, there's been a, a push to um, scrutinize the revenue recognition policies of organizations. And that's probably where this is coming from. But um, I think management has been, uh, it, it has been willing to, to follow our recommendation number nine. It takes a while to work through the system because there are contracts that were already in place, but, but new contracts coming up, um, I, I, certainly the, FIDE accounting team has expressed an interest in getting these, this language into contracts because it'll just make their lives easier. So those were our, our nine recommendations for 20, based on our work here in 2021, looking at the 2020 financial statements. And soon it will be time for us to start again. Um, so with that, um, could you scroll down for one more thing, please? Because I just, I wanna see the next page. Yes, that's good. So uh, Mr. Mazuz had already talked about the trends in the numbers, so I won't go through that again. Um, so those have been our recommendations from the last year and what the results were, our recommendation for the next year. Uh, my last comment is there was a question that came up in our verification commission meeting 
uh, on the 22nd of December asking about um, scrutiny of the Aegon uh, World Chess contracts. Um, some changes to those occurred actually in the 2021 year. So I'm sure those will be topics for the Verification Commission as we start our work based on 2021. So um, I just wanted to mention that. That was the main question that had been raised in our commission meeting. So with that, um, my report is completed unless there are any questions of, of me. Uh, thank you. Thanks a lot for the extensive um, uh, report uh, and recommendations. Um, uh, very uh, useful and very practical. Um, uh, so uh, I uh, saw that um, uh, Zurab President Parashvili uh, asked for floor. Zurab. I did not ask the floor. Sorry. <laughs> Maybe something is wrong here. Okay. So then it's. Um, uh, that's fine. Uh, any questions uh, um, or comments on the Verification Commission report at this point? No? Uh, no questions. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I would like to uh, note that uh, we will um, uh, vote on all five items in section uh, two after uh, uh, item 2.5. Uh, uh, so we'll have the time for voting. Uh, um, uh, and uh, so now we move to point uh, discharge of the treasurer according to our um, uh, charter. So the General Assembly requested to discharge the treasurer from the responsibilities for the financial year 2020. Um, uh, and uh, we will have voting on this um, uh, in a few minutes. Uh, uh, and um, uh, now we turn to uh, item 2.4, budget 2022. I would like to ask um, the Federation Director Dan Rizinsodola to present the budget draft. Thank you, Mr. President, honorable delegates. Uh, you've got uh, uh, both the cover letter of uh, the treasurer and the draft budget uh, annexed to the agenda. You can follow the, the details as well, but let me uh, try to shortly represent the major uh, items of the draft bu budget 2022. So uh, the budget is balanced, uh, 12.84 uh, million euros on both sides, income and expenditure. But prior to go going down to the um, uh, priorities and, uh, and, uh, and positions uh, resembled there, let me point your attention to the form of the budget that has notably changed. You would see that compared to 2021, uh, both the income and expenditure part has, uh, has uh, increased substantially, mainly in the event events section. So that has uh, uh, been um, uh, that has taken place be mainly because of the fact that the, uh, the, the principle of budget has been changed according to the proposal of uh, Madam Treasurer, supported by Council. Uh, we have prepared this draft budget uh, based on uh, gross income and expenditure basis, while uh, in the previous years uh, the net income principle was used. Uh, three major factors for that. Uh, the first one, um, as it was also uh, mentioned by the Verification Commission, uh, FIDE is supposed to register as the VAT payer in Switzerland, according to the legislation, and the accountancy rules uh, require the accountancy uh, based on the gross income and expenditure. The second one, it is the change in the uh, business uh, mode of uh, and operations of, uh, of FIDE. If earlier in the day, all the major events were uh, outsourced, then uh, the new management team has changed the, the, the position regarding that. And uh, we're trying to organize the major events ourselves, including the World Championship uh, match. Uh, while uh, those events were uh, uh, subcontracted, uh, uh, FIDE was still managing some, uh, some uh, organizational payments and uh, and the prize fund, but uh, we're uh, counting only uh, the net income of 20% uh, of the um, of the um, uh, prize uh, uh, funding. So now, when we are organizing the events ourselves, uh, of course, the upside and downside risks are changing. They're much more uh, bigger, and uh, for the sake of the transparency, we consider that uh, uh, both gross uh, income and expenditure would resemble the position. Uh, 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 
better. So that's the approach, uh, the change, uh, uh, change of the approach. And the, the, the third, uh, the third uh, factor is that uh, we learn from the uh, peer uh, federations. Uh, it is a good practice actually among the uh, international sports organizations to, to uh, draft the, the, the budget uh, based on the gross income and expenditure basis. So uh, when you come back to the, uh, to the budget, um, uh, our assumption has been that uh, next year the, the risks created by pandemics would be still strong. Some and many of the chess events would be subdued, but we assume that all the top level tournaments uh, would be staged, uh, including can women and men candidates, Grand Prix series, World Rapid and, um, and uh, Blitz uh, Championship. And uh, uh, this you can see resembled also then in the budget on both sides, as I, as I, uh, as I mentioned. Uh, the major event that we plan the next year, is, of course, it, all, it is also the World Chess Olympiad and uh, Congress to be held in, in Moscow. So uh, mainly the expenses um, considered to be uh, as the support to the federations um, and um, and uh, uh, and participants of both Olympiad and Paralympiad uh, are resembled in this um, budget. As I said, we have planned the budget uh, balanced, not with a surplus, as it was uh, the case of this uh, year, uh, uh, due to the fact, as I said, uh, of uh, planning the expenses for the Olympiad, but also because we have increased the development fund. If uh, this year it was 1 million euros, then for the next year you would see it's 2 million euros. And uh, uh, another change that we have uh, resembled here in the budget, we have uh, increased the, the level of details uh, regarding the development fund, uh, uh, expecting that we'd be supporting not only the national federations and uh, the continents, uh, but uh, various other initiatives, including the Women in Chess uh, um, program has been established as the ne next year is the Women in Chess um, uh, year, particularly de de uh, dedicated to activities in these, in these areas, but other details you can see in the budget as well. As to the other major uh, changes, you would see some increase in the um, in the um, management costs, uh, mainly that is uh, that is uh, done with the intention to resemble our policy. Um, we have increased the, the uh, allocations for the marketing and events position because this is the team that is uh, uh, actually managing those events organized by FIDE under the great leadership of uh, Emil Sotowski. We have managed to organize the, all the major events. We have managed to increase the sponsorship and we uh, envisage that additional investment here in this position would uh, put us in the better position also for the future to be able to capitalize on our made main, uh, main uh, products. Uh, also, you would see the increased um, allocations for the uh, IT capacity. So that's also partly related to our uh, events uh, management, uh, but also the infrastructure needs to be improved for the everyday management and uh, operations. So uh, you heard in the report of uh, our treasurer that we still keep uh, uh, our reserve fund uh, quite high. It's 3 million euros in the normal times. Uh, it might be questionable why to keep it that uh, high, but uh, due to the high level of uh, um, mm, uh, potential risk still, I mean, caused by COVID, we uh, suppose that uh, to be on the safe side and to um, to keep the sustainability of the organizational organization strong, we should uh, actually keep the reserves also a bit uh, excessive. So that has been uh, our approach. Uh, and especially if we see that uh, even if we would be uh, preparing the budget according to old uh, mode uh, re resembling on uh, the, uh, the income on the net basis, our expansion expenditure would be approximately 6 million euros. So the highest uh, expenditure rate while being able also to uh, provide the uh, income uh, part uh, properly uh, as well, the highest level uh, uh, in the late latest uh, years. So that's, I think, the the most important uh, uh, part about uh, the budget. If you would be any questions, we'd be more than happy to answer. Uh, thank you. Um, uh, any questions uh, at this point? No? Uh, Wilkinson? Yeah, Jan Wilkinson, please. 
Thank you, Mr. President. Just a couple of questions on the on the draft budget. Um, I'm the managing director, and good good afternoon to you, Mr. President, and delegates, and everyone else. Um, still morning here in Jamaica. Um, in, in relation to staff salaries, uh, I noticed that there's a huge jump. Um, it's almost doubled from five hundred and eighty thousand to over a million dollars plus. Um, what accounts for this? Is this um, partially due to the, the fact that next year is an Olympiad year, or are there other reasons? That That's the first question. I don't know if I should take them one at a time. I have three questions, actually. Should I wait for a response to that, or should I give or, or make or, or all three questions? It's all three. Yes, sorry. The, the second thing, which I think is commendable, is in the opposite direction. Uh, the, uh, the, the general office expenses down from 93 thousand to 42 it is always good when you're saving and, and cutting your expenses um and what accounts for that i was wondering if if, if if that is sustainable especially going into 2022 when 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 we expect to have more activities i i just i'm, I'm not complaining i'm just i just wondered because it's, it's it's not usual to see expenses trending down um in in succeeding years so I wanted to ask that as well. Um, what accounts for that? And and the third thing, which which I touched on in a in a in a private meeting, which I won't get into that, but the income from the Olympia is scheduled to be two point seven million euros. The expenses two point four. I there is a difference of three hundred thousand. I wonder what is likely to happen with that difference. Are there any particular plans? with the difference in, in that figure. And this is part A and part B of question three. Um, what, what guarantees, especially we're in a general assembly now and, and 2022 is an, an, an Olympiad year. And I'm certain the delegates um, would be interested. And I am particularly interested in, in countries from the English speaking Caribbean in the Americas. Um, what 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 guarantees or provisions can be made for countries um, in terms of support, airfare, and immigration expenses for their teams to the Olympiad in Moscow next year? Those are my three questions, Mr. President. Thank you very much. Thank you. Dana. Right. Yeah. Uh, uh, no, no, Dana will start. Uh. Okay, uh, uh, Mr. Walsh probably would uh, then uh, add add on, but uh, I think uh, Mr. Wilkinson, I already tried to resemble what has been the reason for the major changes in the. Um, uh, salary parts. So we have increased the the, the uh, allocations for the uh, marketing and PR and uh, events management position, which is very crucial if we want to uh, organize the events ourselves and if we want to capitalize on our products. The fact that we have had this team operational and we we see that we need additional resources, resources there have uh, allowed us uh, to attract sponsors and to organize the events at the level that we uh, have been doing uh, that, uh, now and we see the need for the improvement. The same you would see that, uh, as I said, it is the IT department where we see that the capacities have to be uh, increased, uh, notably increased. So we've reduced uh, the overall uh, office expenses, which also uh, in previous years uh, contained some of the uh, IT expenses and are resembling this in the separate uh, budget line, line just for a bigger transparency and, and, and uh, and uh, to have it uh, uh, more uh, uh, clearly represented. Uh, so uh, as for the um, Olympiad, you would see that, uh, as I also was trying to uh, introduce it in the, in the beginning, that here you would not see the overall expenses of the, uh, of the Royal Chess Olympiad. Here, what you see is uh, uh, basically the costs that we envisage uh, within the support programs for the federations, both in Olympiad and the Olympiad uh, for the people with uh, uh, dis disabilities. So we are going to uh, repeat the same practice also that was used the last time, that uh, for those uh, uh, federations that are remote, uh, uh, that uh, those uh, federations uh, that are of the less developed uh, level, we will be uh, assisting them with the uh, uh, traveling uh, costs. The same goes for the 
for the uh, uh, Olympiad with, uh, for the people with disabilities, special um, support uh, system will be introduced for the federations to support them uh, coming coming over to, to the event. We want to have wide rep representation there. Here, you would not be seeing uh, all the major costs uh, not directly going through FIDE uh, resembled related to Olympiad. Um, uh, if Mr. Wolzhen wants to add something, I'd be more than happy, but probably pre Mr. President may, may give some update on the Olympiad, yes. Uh, Alexander? Uh, nothing really. I think Donna has said uh, pretty much everything. I also think so. Uh, regarding the Olympiad, it's an ongoing process. Uh, we are in uh, almost uh, daily talks with uh, organizers regarding uh, various items. So anyway, figures will be uh, changing a bit uh, uh, to reflect the, uh, current, uh, the actual situation with uh, um, all kinds of expenses. Uh, uh, so that's our best guess for now about uh, the situation, but uh, we will uh, update everyone on the figures when uh, um, those will change. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Okay. Uh, any other questions? No? Well, I think there are no, qu no more questions. Uh, uh, so thanks a lot for uh, the presentation and uh, questions and answers. Uh, and uh, uh, the last item in this part is appointment of external auditor for 2021, Alexander. Right. The proposal is to uh, reappoint uh, Ernst Young uh, as uh, our auditor for the uh, 2021 financial year. Yes, and uh, I think it was explained already by uh, uh, by uh, Mr. Priest, uh, the boss. Uh, our intention to change, but the reasons why we uh, uh, are not doing this um, immediately. So, uh, any questions on this one? Mr. President. Um, yes, please. This is the, the verification commission was consulted about the appointment of the external auditor and does did not object to retaining Ernst and Young for the 2021 audit. Yes, thanks a lot. Yes, I forgot to mention that it is based on the uh, yes, of course, opinion on the verification commission. Um, and um, I think it's reasonable that there are no objections on this one, given the situation. So now we have uh, uh, time for um, uh, vo voting uh, on uh, items uh, 2.1, 2.2, 2.3, 2.4, and 2.5. Uh, uh, the voting will be uh, open now for every uh, one, for all delegates. Uh, uh, and um, uh, we will have now <clears throat> 10 minute break uh, to allow everyone to uh, uh, to vote, but the uh, voting uh, can last uh, up to 20 minutes. But please come back uh, in uh, not later than 10 minutes um, uh, to participate, Jay, uh, for section three. Thank you.
Okay. Uh, so, dear colleagues, uh, uh, hopefully the voting goes smoothly. We shall continue our uh, meeting, uh, our session. <clears throat> um, section number three, uh, Federation and Membership uh, Issues. Um, we have uh, four uh, uh, applications uh, from um, uh, new potential members of uh, FIDE uh, that have been submitted uh, uh, during the last um, uh, couple of months. Uh, so including um, uh, St. Vincent and Grenadines, Niger, Belize, uh, and Dominica. Uh, we uh, discussed um, this application um, uh, at the FIDE Council meetings. Uh, and uh, uh, found uh, uh, that uh, uh, except for Belize, um, uh, we have uh, uh, quite uh, decent. Hmm? Uh, uh, composition of uh, uh, compositions of applications and sufficient grounds uh, to believe that this uh, new members uh, uh, will be um, uh, full-scale um, uh, participants uh, of uh, FIDE uh, family, uh, while for Belize, uh, we didn't receive um, uh, uh, all uh, necessary documents, uh, and uh, it looks like um, uh, the new body is not ready yet. Uh, I would like to mention uh, at the same time that um, um, we uh, have proposed in the election uh, rules, in the draft election rules, that we will uh, uh, have the voting on uh, a bit uh, later uh, to uh, limit uh, the electoral rights uh, of the new members that uh, uh, we will hopefully accept uh, today. Um, so they will not be able to participate uh, in elections uh, next year. Uh, and uh, they will um, uh, get the election uh, electoral rights uh, uh, only um, uh, um, after that, uh, uh, while they will um, uh, be able to um, uh, to enjoy uh, all other rights, uh, and they will have to fulfill uh, all um, uh, the responsibilities of uh, member federations. Uh, so uh, the most important right, of course, uh, would be to uh, play under the national flags, including uh, its uh, uh, FIDE Olympiad uh, uh, next year uh, in uh, Russia. So uh, our proposal um, is to accept applications of um, three federations, St. Vincent, Grenadines, uh, Niger, and Dominica, uh, while, um, uh, con uh, while to continue working with uh, uh, Belize uh, um, chess community on, um, uh, uh, on their uh, potential uh, application. Uh, so, um, any uh, questions or comments um, uh, about um, uh, this subject uh, and uh, uh, the proposals that I just formulated? Uh, Mr. Wilkinson. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I, I am particularly pleased to see these proposals and I am encouraging the delegates to support um, the proposals you mentioned. Um, as, as many would know, the English-speaking Caribbean is dear to my heart. For the past 10 years, I have pressed very hard to try and get new members um, into FIDE. And I, I want to express my gratitude to you and the FIDE Council, and, and especially to Grandmaster Vice President Nigel Short, um, who embarked with me on what we call a Caribbean excursion a, a few years ago. Uh, resulting in a number of new countries, such as St. Lucia, um, St. Kitts and Nevis, and Cayman Islands, just to name a few. And, 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 and Dominica and the St. Vincent and the Grenadines are, are two of the latest ones from the region, um, along with, 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 with Niger and Niger. Um, I, I would like to urge delegates to support um, the proposals and, and to welcome these new territories in, in, in to feed the family. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Jan, thank you. Any other? Um... Opinions, questions? No? Um, so we'll have the voting um, uh, after uh, uh, 
uh, completion of the discussions on section three. Uh, so the next um, one uh, is a letter from the Ukrainian Chess Federation regarding uh, uh, the ratings of uh, two Ukrainian players. I would like to give uh, floor to, uh, uh, to Nigel Short uh, to comment uh, on that, uh, please. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. President. Um, uh, I'll try and be brief. Uh, the issue uh, raised by the Ukrainian Chess Federation uh, involved two players um, who we uh, believe um, have been involved in fairly egregious a uh, case of rating manipulation. And um, we have uh, in FIDE the, auth the uh, authority not to rate certain events uh, if we have doubts about them. And um, the resolution of the council uh, yesterday uh, is in Annex 3, Point two point one c and um, it's fairly clear uh, what we are recommending as a uh, course of action. Uh, well, we will restore the ratings of these players, but uh, minus uh, these uh, series of tournaments, uh, quite large series of tournaments in which uh, we believe uh, they have been involved in rating m manipulation. Thank you. Mm, thank you, Nigel. Uh, yes, I would like to uh, confirm that yesterday the FIDE Council uh, uh, took uh, this uh, decision uh, at the FIDE Council meeting, uh, and uh, we would like to ask uh, General Assembly to uh, support this, um, uh, this decision. Uh, please, any questions or comments on that? No? Okay, I guess no, no questions or comments. Thank you. So we uh, turn to um, voting now. Do, do we still need a break for that or not? Uh, no, we, we just open the voting. Uh, no, sorry. Ah, okay. So uh, we will start voting on, on this uh, after uh, the previous voting will be finished. So I will uh, uh, I will announce when uh, you will uh, you will be able to vote on this. Uh, so let's uh, uh, turn to uh, the next item while um, the previous voting is still uh, uh, going on. Uh, we have this, uh, section four uh, item, um, of, uh, and uh, this uh, um, section is about uh, administrative matters uh, and. Uh, uh, there are a few very important things that we would like to uh, change in the handbook, but we'll start with uh, uh, proposals of the Papua New uh, Guinea Chess Federation. Uh, it's uh, 4.1.1. Uh, uh, um, uh, so, uh, do we have a uh, delegate here? Yes. Mr. Press, are you here? Uh, yes. Yes. Sean Press, please. No. Uh, uh, Sean, can you uh, unmute uh, yourself? Uh, switch on the microphone, please. Uh, while we are waiting, uh, uh, Mr. Borg, please. Mr. President, um, uh, it's just a small point. 
I note that in uh, Roberto Rivello's report, he actually uh, recommends uh, quite strongly that this particular thing should not actually be uh, passed, particularly in this Congress. And yes, that's say, correct. Uh, that's correct, Jeffrey. Yes, uh, uh, we, uh, we, I we recommend not, 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 to, not to approve this. Uh, that's true. So, I mean, because, of course, many people will vote blindly. So it's just important that we explain that the Constitutional Commission has reviewed this. I also found it very strange that uh, such a thing was actually presented without any motivation, you know, just uh, adaption to paragraphs. Whereas I note, at least in future, in your proposed General Assembly regulations, uh, federations proposing amendments to the handbook should at least uh, put motivations across. So in future, we should avoid just dumping, you know, modifications to annexes, you know, to a handbook without any motivations, you know. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Jeffrey. Yes, uh, thanks a lot. Uh, yes, let me uh, once again uh, underline that uh, it is both the recommendation of um, the uh, Constitutional Commission uh, and the Fed Council um, uh, to reject uh, the proposals of the uh, uh, Chess Federation of Papua New Guinea uh, uh, and um, continue discussions on, on those uh, matters. Uh, um, Mr. Press, uh, were you able to unmute? Yes, please. We could see you now. Yes, Sean, yes, we, we can see you. Uh, it's unmute. Lost again. Yes, you're here with us. Yes, please, Sean. While we are trying to connect with Sean, uh, um, uh, I'd like to give a floor for uh, uh, Manaka. Patrick Van Holland, please. Um, bonjour à tous, vous m'entendez? Please. Uh, vous m'entendez? Yes, we're working. Can okay. you hear me now? Moi, moi je voulais également... Um, abonder dans le même sens que Geoffrey Borg, parce que cette, euh, cette décision est, est vraiment très importante, parce que de fait, elle exclurait euh, plusieurs membres des pays comme euh, Jersey, Guernsey ou, ou même euh, l'Écosse, qui, qui ont participé à la, à la création et à la fondation euh, de la FIDE au développement. Et euh, c'est une décision, euh, nous avons voté à Abu Dhabi la charte de la FIDE euh, en, en acceptant que les pays qui étaient déjà membres, euh, le reste, euh, je dirais, pour le futur. Donc, ce serait, ce serait en fait euh, voter contre une décision que les délégués eux-mêmes ont prise il y a de ça euh, deux années maintenant. De plus, euh, je pense que la, la devise de la FIDE est « Gens una sumus » et ce, ce genre de proposition euh, est contraire à notre éthique et à notre esprit. Nous voulons rassembler le plus possible euh, de joueurs et nous ne voulons donc pas exclure des fédérations qui euh, sont là depuis, depuis des années et ont toujours eu droit de vote et j'espère que pour le futur, euh, ce sera toujours comme cela. Yes, thank you, Patrick. I can see that many people want to speak, but again, I would like to reiterate that um, both the Constitutional Commission and the Federal Council are against the proposals of the um, Federation of Papua New Guinea. So if you want to um, just repeat um, the position of uh, um, the Constitutional Commission, and uh, feed the Council, of course, I will give the f floor, but uh, 
uh, let's stop somewhere so, unless there are any um, opinions in favor of um, the proposals. So, but uh, uh, Malcolm Payne, please. Oh, thank you, Mr. President. Yeah, I, I think, uh, although I didn't have time to, to hit the translate button uh, uh, quick enough when Patrick was saying, he was pointing out, I believe, that this effectively disenfranchises several nations, some of whom were founder members, if I understood the French right. And I just wanted to emphasize that when I counted the number of members who'd be disenfranchised by this proposal, I think it came to 19. Um, just to, to take you through uh, very quickly, Bermuda, Guernsey, Jersey, Caymans, Faroe Islands, Netherlands, Antilles, Puerto Rico, Aruba, uh, both Virgin Islands, Hong Kong, Palestine, Macau, Taiwan, Guam, and the British Isles. So we're very firmly against this uh, resolution. Thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, in how, uh, how, please, Scotland. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to reiterate, reiterate the words of my colleague from England, Malcolm Payne. I actually had a speech written and prepared for this, uh, this motion to ask that Congress defeated it. Thankfully, um, common sense seems to prevail. You've all seen it's not going to be good for us. And I thank you for, for actually saying publicly that we should vote against this. Thank you very much. Thank you, um, uh, Alan Herbert Barbados. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I just want to um, reiterate uh, the sentiments of my colleagues from England, Scotland and Monaco, but there's still one problem obviously not to be dealt with in this Congress, and it was introduced in the change of the Charter where the membership right put a change one simple word that you had to be UN and an IOC member, where it was a or, one or the other, by putting the and, there are IOC members, some of whom are in the Caribbean who are not FIDE members right now, who cannot become full FIDE members. And I will certainly be bringing a resolution for next year's General Assembly to address that injustice. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, I agree that we should be very careful about this membership um, issues uh, and uh, we should not um, hurry up with any changes uh, uh, even though that uh, uh, look editorial, uh, so uh, I would suggest to uh, uh, to decline the, propo uh, the proposal um, uh, now anyway, and continue discussions if necessary before the next uh, uh, General Assembly. Uh, Jorge Vega, please. Can you hear me? Yes. 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 Okay. <clears throat> Since a long time ago, Phil have struggled <clears throat> to add more federation. And at this moment, uh, we have around, uh, uh, around uh, 200 federation members in Phil. Uh, this proposal deprived a lot of federation of the full membership. And of course, I am against this and I ask to reject these proposals. Thank you very much. Thank you. So unless uh, we can uh, hear from Sean Press, uh, I think we should close uh, discussion on this. Uh, Sean, were you able to correct the microphone? Okay, let's um, uh, let's um, stop on this. Um, uh, I would like to uh, ask everyone's attention. Uh, the voting uh, uh, for uh, section uh, two uh, was closed, uh, and uh, uh, we now uh, we are now opening uh, the voting for section three items uh, three point one and three point two. Please start uh, uh, voting uh, now. It will last for 20 minutes. Um, and um, we turn to uh, item, uh, so, sorry, do we have the results for it? Not, not yet, okay. Uh, so we turn to, uh, to the item 4.1.2, FIDE electoral rules. Uh, Robert Rivello, uh, Chairman of Constitutional Commission, please. Uh, 
Yes, uh, well, I think it is a very, very important uh, uh, new rules because in the past uh, we had uh, well, less than one page of rules and there was more or less a compromise among uh, the parties uh, that uh, tried to be elected in one of the past election. Now, I think uh, this document uh, is a uh, uh, comprehensive uh, of uh, all uh, well uh, the necessary rules about all different uh, typologies of elections. Uh, we tried to adhere also how to organize uh, campaigning and uh, eventually what could be the sanctions in case of uh, uh, not legitimate uh, behaviors by the candidates. Uh, we, mm, as, as you know, uh, we um, disseminated the first draft version of these electoral rules to all federations and to all FIDE organs. We received uh, some comments and uh, we tried to uh, approve the large majority of uh, the requests we received. For example, from ECU, uh, there was a request to uh, specify something about uh, the composition of the council and the election of the council. So, and uh, we did it uh, from um, uh, English Chess Federation, where there were many useful uh, uh, suggestions also about uh, uh, English wording. Of course, uh, my English is very bad, and uh, they uh, improved uh, quite a lot. Some of uh, uh, the articles. Uh, um, uh, English federations also uh, asked uh, some questions about interpretation. And uh, well, whether we believed that in this case was a more or less clear the answer. So we didn't need to accept all the requests from English Chess Federation. Uh, from, uh, then uh, the council uh, and uh, the management board also asked something, for example, to add uh, some rules uh, about a potential conflict of interest, uh, and we added, uh, and uh, about uh, the legitimate, the, the possibility to, uh, to have advertisements, because we, uh, at the beginning, uh, we just uh, added that it is forbidden, for example, to pay journalists uh, for something, and uh, we were requested to specify that advertisement is not the same, of course, than uh, to pay journalists uh, to um, make some not correct uh, information about uh, the development uh, of the uh, different campaigning uh, by candidates and so on. So uh, I believe that uh, we answered uh, all of the requests uh, um, we received. Of course, it will be very interesting to, to discuss all uh, the article, but it will be very long. So probably uh, you already uh, studied this, this document, uh, and I think it's better if you still have some, some uh, request of clarification to wait for your questions. Thanks a lot, Roberto. Uh, before uh, going to the questions, um, uh, once again, we, we started uh, voting on um, uh, section number three, uh, and just to uh, remind you that uh, um, the council recommendation is to accept three um, new members, um, uh, St. Vincent and uh, Grenadines, uh, Niger uh, and uh, Dominica, while uh, rejecting the application at this point of Belize and continuing working with them. Uh, and uh, on, on um, 3.2, uh, to approve the FIDE Council um, uh, resolution regarding uh, Ukrainian players. Um, thank you. So now um, we turn to um, uh, questions regarding electoral rules or comments, please. Everything is crystal clear. Uh, Georgis Makropoulos, Greece, please. Uh, 
Georgios, we can't hear you. Can you hear me? Now? Yes, now, yes. Okay, thank you, Mr. President. First of all, I would like to, to wish to everybody my best wishes for the next year, especially good uh, health and uh, prosperity. I hope we will get rid of the problems that we have with this coronavirus and we'll be able to have uh, assemblies, uh, normal assemblies, meet the, each of the others. Concerning uh, the regulations, I would like to congratulate the people that they have been working uh, for these regulations. I believe it's a great step to the right way, where uh, a lot of problems uh, they will be solved with these regulations. So I would like to thank uh, Mr. Rivello and his team and uh, to the council that has endorsed this uh, regulation. And uh, I propose, of course, to, to support this uh, Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, Georges. Thank you. Um, any other comments or questions? No? No, I think there are no, uh, no other questions. Uh, uh, so, um, Roberto, thanks a lot for uh, to you and uh, uh, the working group that uh, have been developing the uh, draft electoral uh, rules. Uh, so we will uh, have the voting uh, a bit later after finishing the voting on uh, section three. Uh, we turn to ethics and disciplinary code uh, that have, uh, have been developed uh, primarily by um, uh, Francois Trudom, the chairman of um, uh, EDC, but of course in collaboration with uh, other colleagues and commissions. Uh, Francois, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, good afternoon, uh, members of the FIDE Council. Uh, FIDE directors and delegates. Um, it is a privilege to be part of the Congress today and thank you for the opportunity to just say a few words before we put the motion to vote. This is actually a historic day in the history of FIDE because the current version of the um, ethics code uh, was approved in 1989 and has been in use for the past 32 years. Um, it was, uh, it's a, a a product of, of, a, of a different time, more simplistic times. It was only two pages long. Um, I've had the privilege in my capacity as chair of the uh, Ethics Commission the last seven years to be involved in enfor enforcement of that uh, uh, code. Um, but uh, we have moved on and uh, it is time to modernize our uh, code, to bring it in line with other international sports federations and the requirements of the International Olympic Committee. Um, therefore, the current document is, in fact, 40 pages long. That's excluding the index and the definitions. Um, now, this, is, uh, this initiative of Mr. President and, and the FIDE management is, of course, a part of the general update of all the documents in the FIDE handbook. And, and this uh, initiative started last year with uh, um, the uh, approval of the new FIDE charter in uh, February 2020 in Abu Dhabi. Um, the, um, the code, the new code, actually consists of two codes. There's an ethics code and there's a disciplinary code. Uh, I, I will not now spend time in, in explaining the differences, but there are different procedures depending on the nature of the transgressions. Um, the code was prepared by a subcommittee of uh, the Ethics Commission and was subsequently put forward for consideration by FIDE management, the FIDE Council, the Constitutional Commission, the Fair Play Commission, and also national federations. And uh, as far as we could, we have accommodated all the various uh, suggestions for which we are very thankful. Um, the, um, the latest version uh, has been approved by the FIDE Council. And it is my understanding that the FIDE Council recommends that the General Assembly approves uh, this document. Um, I may just say, what is the purpose of this document? It is the mission of FIDE to promote the highest possible ethical values within the sport of chess and to ensure that the spirit of fair play and good sportsmanship prevails at all times. The, the code sets out uh, certain ethical values, principles and duties, which are applicable, applicable throughout the uh, chess community and our sport. Um, it also, uh, represents the, the best thinking uh, currently amongst uh, international sports federations regarding the ne necessary ethical standards in the play and governance of sport. 
and it conforms to requirements of the IOC for Olympic recognized sports bodies. Um, it is um, a, a somewhat technical document, uh, um, uh, so somewhat complex, but what we prop uh, propose from the Ethics Commission is we will produce in due course various uh, how-to guides, uh, for example, how to submit a complaint or how to defend yourself against a, a complaint um, in more simpler language, which we will publish on, on the FIDE web website to uh, facilitate uh, better understanding and use of the procedures. Um, this is not the, the end of the process. Uh, the Ethics Commission is also uh, busy with preparing procedural rules, more detailed procedural rules, which will also um, help people to understand the process better and, and to prevent so many cases from being ruled inadmissible. Um, thank you very much, Mr. President. Um, thank you for your support. And um, I would uh, recommend that the Council, uh, that the General Assembly uh, vote in favor of the adoption of the new code. Uh, thank you, Francois, a lot for, for your uh, work and um, uh, that resulted in uh, this uh, uh, very well prepared draft. Um, uh, certainly, uh, I personally and the FIDE Council the whole support um, uh, the draft, uh, uh, but we will be able to uh, discuss it now. Uh, before uh, going to uh, questions and comments, I'd like to inform you about the results of voting on section two. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, to approve the report of the <coughs> sorry, approve the report of the FIDE Treasurer, we have uh, 120 in favor, uh, one against. Uh, to uh, approve the Verification Commission's report, we have 112 in favor, uh, two uh, uh, abstained. Uh, to discharge the Treasurer uh, from the responsibilities for the financial year 2020. 115 in favor, five abstained. Uh, to approve the 2022 budget, uh, 112 in favor, one abstained. Uh, and uh, to um, appoint uh, Ernst Young as external auditor for annual audit of uh, FIDE accounts for 2021, 111 in favor, two against, three abstained. So decisions uh, on uh, items 2.1 to 2.5, uh, uh, are taken uh, all um, uh, all positive. Uh, so now, um, um, uh, Malcolm Payne, um, England, please. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, congratulations, really, to everyone involved in producing this document. Um, the English Chess Federation officials and senior arbiters considered it in detail, and uh, we sent our response to Francoise. Uh, we like. We like nearly everything about it. We agree that it's 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 an essential upgrade uh, to the procedures and and and, and the statutes of, of the federation. We're just very very uncomfortable with section nine, and I don't know if I've got the whether there's the ability in the meeting for me to highlight uh, which component it is, uh, so that people can actually see what I, what I'm talking about rather than me having to sort of effectively read it out. Um, but there's a couple of things that, that, that we're worried about. I think I'll, I'd like to, to talk about the, the one that's possibly less important first before we come on to the more important one. Um, the first one is the idea that we should delete the entire history of someone who's found guilty of cheating. Um, it, it seems to me that one of the things that, that FIDE does is essentially we're, we're the journal of record. We keep, we keep the history of chess. Uh, within the organization so that it can be shared and studied for future generations. And the idea, I mean, while we totally agree that somebody who's found cheating should lose their rating, their title, and, and, and the various other achievements, it seems to us that the record of their play doesn't have to actually disappear completely. Uh, and uh, one of my colleagues, Alex Holacek, who obviously knows a lot more about American sports than me, pointed out that the result of the 1919 World Series which I understand was sullied in some way, hasn't been his deleted yet from the history of Major League Baseball. So we don't think that, that someone should be almost <laughs> like back in the history of the Soviet Union, you know, become a non-person in that sense, like they never existed. So we think that that is possibly something that should be, should be reconsidered. Um, the second thing which is, which, is possi which is more troubling to us, uh, which we find in 9.2, 9.3, 9.4, uh, and which we sent to Francois, uh, is that we're 
a little bit worried about the idea. If it was just for, for online play, then the idea of banning a player with a fast track system just based on, on statistics uh, is, 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 well, it's a really new thing. It's a, it's a massive change, I believe, in the way that we've been dealing with the cheating problem. And I fully accept that we've been struggling to deal with it properly and that something needs to be done. And again, I commend everyone for the work they're done, they've done. But this seems to be something absolutely huge. And it comes in tandem with uh, essentially what we're saying is we're banning you for something, but we're not saying you're cheating. So if you look, um, if, if, if you look in, the, uh, in, in, in section nine, you can see we have this uh, kind of approach, which is, uh, I suppose I could almost call it something like a, a chess.com approach, which is that we're, we're worried about your play, but we're not saying you're cheating. And we've had this appear in some FIDE events. And we think that extending that uh, to over the board play is, is, well, is really radical. So I think what we be comfortable with is accepting this 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 great document almost in its entirety but possibly sending back section nine for a little bit more work that's our view thanks for the opportunity to express it yes thank you malcolm uh, francois uh, can you uh, cover uh, maybe the first uh, part uh, regarding uh, deleting all the data yes thank you mr president uh, Malcolm is referring to uh, one of the forms of sanction which appears in Article 13.2, sub D, um, which allows um, the Ethics Commission, um, uh, upon finding someone guilty, to remove a player's historical data from the FIDE database. Um, now, uh, Malcolm, uh, we did take note of uh, England's uh, uh, comments in this regard, and it has been qualified that this only will apply in the event of a lifetime ban. And a lifetime ban in itself is a very extraordinary uh, uh, situation because normally the maximum length of ban which may be imposed is 15 years. And only in exceptional circumstances um, will um, can a lifetime ban be imposed. And only in the case of a lifetime ban will you have the situation where the historical data is uh, uh, struck out from, from the database. It is, of course, a discretionary matter. It's not to say that it will happen in each and every case. Um, and um, so we, we believe that there may be such circumstances in the future where uh, there they might be a need for to exercise uh, uh, this right. But it certainly may be a one in a, in a, in a, in a hundred uh, cases or one in a 200 uh, cases um, seeing that we're talking about the statistics as well. Uh, so it, it is not a, a big thing. It's, it's a small ripple on the pond. And, and certainly when a, a panel of the Ethics Commission considers an appropriate sanction, it will take into account all of the considerations. And, uh, you know, I can't look into the crystal ball and say uh, what particular situation might arise in the future where uh, this might be appropriate. But it has been severely cut down its scope. Uh, and limited in reaction to England's uh, proposal. Thank you, Mr. President. Okay, uh, thank you. Well, certainly, uh, well, I personally for, for uh, keeping this data, at least in some archives, of course, not showing uh, uh, this uh, uh, publicly uh, anymore, uh, but uh, hopefully we will not have uh, such decisions anyway, uh, at least before the next general assembly, if, if needed, uh, we can correct it then. Uh, regarding fast track, uh, um, I don't know, maybe uh, Dana, uh, you can... Uh, shortly, Honourable de Delegates, so on behalf of Fair Play Commission, I would actually uh, kindly ask you to uh, confirm the full package as it is, because this uh, issue has been uh, very extensively discussed in various uh, formats. Um, and uh, the overall understanding is that uh, we have to find the right balance between the necessity to uh, fight against the cheating and, be and between the uh, preserving uh, the human rights of the, the players as well. And I believe that uh, the wording as it is now and the whole concept has been uh, developed in a very well and balanced uh, way, uh, including using the right wording, uh, particularly not stating that in these cases when the fast track would be applied, the people has been uh, cheating. Well, in most cases, that would imply that the, this is the case, particularly because uh, this is very sensitive. So we are using the, the softer terms like uh, breaking the fair play uh, rules. And uh, in practice, of course, uh, that 
I would say 99%, even probably more, um, this fast track uh, would be applied in the online chess. But uh, uh, online or offline, I mean, this is the mode of operations and the laws and, and the regulations has to be the same, regardless of the um, uh, mode of operation. So that is why we would not, and the, this was also considered, uh, we would not be willing to uh, in, uh, impose uh, various or different rules uh, uh, in online and offline, offline uh, life. Because fair play, is, it's the same principles that has to be uh, you know, followed uh, in both cases. And, and these decisions will be, of course, uh, very carefully uh, made by the fair play panels allocated to the tournaments, which means that we talk only about high-level official FIDA events, where keeping the fair play pr principles strong is of uh, extremely high importance. We're not talking about all, uh, other uh, various competitions that are there uh, uh, existing, which will not have the fair play um, uh, panels allocated. Yes, so it's a limited number of the tournaments that we are uh, talking about, but uh, the most important ones where we have to secure the fair play. Uh, thank you, thank you. Uh, Mr. President, uh, may I perhaps just add something to what please, Donna said? Please, please. Um, Malcolm, I, I just would like to draw your attention to Article 9.7, which provides in essence that if they are uh, uh, reasonable evidence, uh, uh, if there are uh, sufficient evidence to uh, sort of uh, predict a, a reasonable uh, um, chance of a conviction of cheating, then it follows the normal routes. Uh, what, what we have in mind is that when we talk about fair play rules, cheating is the highest form of an offense against the fair play rules, but there might be more minor, like let's say being in possession of a mobile phone in a, in a tournament is also a breach of the fair play rules, which is uh, uh, less than, than, than cheating. Um, or if you're in an online situation, your camera is switched off while the, uh, the tournament regulations required to be on. Uh, so what, what this procedure has in mind is to, instead of, uh, of the protracted uh, proceedings before the Ethics Commission, where there's an exchange of statements and it uh, takes two to three months to, to, to finish a case, is to provide a situation where if someone pro uh, admits guilt, that uh, for, a, for a lesser offense, um, not cheating, lesser offense, then um, one can deal with it fairly quickly uh, with a three month ban and, and move on. Thank you. Um, Mr. Mamut of uh, Kyrgyzstan. Talant, uh, are you with us? I think your microphone is off. Can you unmute yourself? We cannot hear you. Okay, if you will be able to do that, uh, maybe just a bit um, uh, later bef before we will start voting uh, on section four. Um, uh, do we have any other questions? No? No, okay. Um, so let's move to um, the next one. Th uh, Francois, thanks a lot uh, once again. Uh, and uh, uh, I think we will uh, have uh, very good uh, basis for uh, 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 following uh, et ethical principles in FIDE, uh, and hopefully people will not get to the station when they have to be punished for anything. Uh, so the next one is um, General Assembly uh, Internal Rules. Um, Roberto? Yes, um, I think uh, Sava uh, was uh, also another person in charge of this, but I can illustrate this very briefly. There are some uh, um, additional rules in comparison to uh, what the General Assembly approved the last year. 
mainly now there are references uh, to the um, electoral rules. Uh, the last year this was not possible, today it is, is possible. And so in, um, on many aspects, uh, it was possible to improve, for example, about uh, uh, roll call, uh, about uh, scrutineers, and so on. Now there are references uh, to electoral rules that uh, uh, hopefully today uh, the General Assembly will approve. Then there are some other minor changes, uh, but uh, the, these uh, uh, were requested, especially also by uh, the FIDE office and so on. But I, some other rules are the same of the last year. So I think this is a um, uh, well. I cannot say less significant, it's also an important document, but of course, uh, much simpler than the other two that we have just discussed. Uh, thank you. Uh, please, uh, any questions? No? I think there are no questions. Uh, uh, do we have uh, voting for section three finished? Not yet. Okay. Uh, so unless uh, any questions uh, right now, um, I suggest we quickly consider um, uh, item number 8.1 from uh, section eight, uh, since it's also uh, the subject that we will have to vote uh, on uh, before we will move to um, to section uh, five. Uh, uh, so the, this is FIDE awards. Uh, yesterday, the council meeting, um, uh, uh, I informed my colleagues about uh, uh, the proposal that um, uh, I uh, have submitted to the General Assembly as FIDE president uh, to award um, the honor honorable uh, title, uh, honorable member. Uh, to the president of the Chess Federation of Russia, Andrei Filatov, uh, for his uh, um, uh, big contribution to uh, the development of uh, chess. Uh, uh, as you uh, remember, uh, Andrei Filatov was also the member of the uh, executive board uh, uh, for a long time. Uh, and during the last uh, already 10 years, even more, he uh, was able to organize um, uh, almost all major uh, uh, FIDE events uh, in uh, uh, Russia, uh, including um, the World Championship matches, uh, Chess Olympiad, uh, uh, candidates tournaments, um, um, uh, stages of uh, Grand Prix uh, series. Uh, and uh, I think um, uh, the work that uh, he has been doing deserves uh, uh, our um, um, very positive evaluation. Uh, and uh, I strongly recommend uh, uh, to uh, approve the proposal to, um, to award uh, Andrei Filatov uh, with the uh, title of honorary member of uh, FIDE. Uh, I'm ready to answer your questions uh, or respond to the comments if there are any. So no questions, comments? Thank you. Thank you. But we will have the voting anyway. <laughs> uh, uh, and um, uh, item, uh, uh, well, I think item 8.2 doesn't require any voting. It's, uh, I already informed you about uh, the plan to uh, hold the FIDE Congress 2022 uh, in uh, Moscow next year, starting from 27th of uh, July, and it will last until uh, uh, the 2nd of uh, August. Uh, um, uh, maybe we will propose to hold some commission meetings uh, uh, in Hante Mansi, uh, Mansi before that, uh, so that will extend the length of the uh, uh, Congress uh, by a couple of um, uh, days, uh, uh, especially the disabled commission meeting, since uh, in Hunt Mansisk will have the uh, Olympiad for players with disabilities. Uh, uh, so, but that's basically um, the plan, uh, and uh, we will welcome all of you in Russia uh, next year uh, in July and August. Uh, so, and uh, item uh, 8.3.1 uh, is the uh, proposal of the Rules Commission. Um, 
uh, a, uh, its importance uh, uh, is related to the fact that we are going to change the rules of um, uh, chess and uh, the, all the changes are about the uh, usage of um, uh, electronic uh, score sheets. Uh, um, what we do here uh, is uh, uh, is um, uh, clarifying um, uh, all the provisions uh, uh, to use uh, electronic score sheets for uh, uh, for uh, uh, official uh, purposes, uh, but the changes come into effect uh, on August first, two thousand twenty-two. So, if you will find any issues, uh, any problems with the provisions uh, that we have uh, right now, based on the practices of using electronic score sheets, uh, various uh, events uh, will be uh, still able to correct the mistakes uh, and improve uh, the wording at the next general assembly. So, we have sufficient time uh, to test um, uh, test these uh, things. So, um, any questions about uh, this part? I'd like to thank Technical Commission, Rules Commission, uh, uh, and the uh, working group um, who worked on these changes. So, uh, any questions about 8.3.1? No questions? Hmm? Uh, I think there's a question from uh, Australia or no comment. Please, Australia. Kevin. We can't hear you, Mr. Bingham. Well, there is uh, no connection. So um, turn to Mark Bijoli. Yes, thank you. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, my question about uh, the use of the electronic score sheets belongs to the fact that there is another uh, part of the laws of chess where it is stated that the score sheet is a property of the of the organizer. And the point being, if two players in a tournament with just no electronic board are playing with the electronic score sheets, what remains to the organizer of a tournament at the end of the game for that particular game? So uh, the players are, uh, uh, the uh, electronic score sheet is belonging to the players. They are taking the, uh, it with them. And at the end of the game, nothing remains for the tournament in case the game is not recorded electronically by an electronic chessboard. Thank you. Um, uh, Victor Bologan, please. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, thank you, Marco, for the question. Uh, the regulations, uh, they state that uh, the, this uh, uh, device, it should be in full responsibility for organizers. So in order to avoid any kind of cheating, the the device which we are going to, uh, it, it was recommended to it's uh, um, should be uh, provided by fully by the organizers is fully in the organizers responsibility so uh, the device will stay with the organizer uh, talking about the score sheet and uh, what remains to the organizers it's in the text of the game which is stored in the uh, in the computers an organizers computer so that it's uh, like uh, evidence of the game which can be later be used for a further possible disputes of of uh, anything so uh, that's uh, the replacement of uh, not, uh, the procedure of physically uh, holding uh, the paper score sheets 
And uh, the, the, that's uh, a, a mandatory moment that uh, if this uh, will be approved, uh, then uh, um, the organizers will be on their responsibility to provide this device, uh, the, the devices and to collect them back after the game. So it's not a property of the player, but of the organizers. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Kevin, uh, are you able to solve the problem with the microphone? Uh, I hope so. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Please. Yes, sorry, sorry about that. When I, um, I I just accidentally dropped out, but I just wanted to say that there are several people, including me, having problems with the voting system, and nothing that is being suggested to get around those problems is working. So, if there are any votes going on at the moment, then some people cannot vote. Yes, we uh, get signals that something is wrong with uh, with voting, but let me check um, uh, in a minute um, the... Um, hmm? Yeah, we are checking now what's, uh, what's going on with, uh, with that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So, if there are no further questions regarding uh, electronic score sheets, um, um, uh, we... Um, pro we are proposing to improve those, uh, but with uh, 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 taking into account um, uh, the uh, period of time where we will be able to uh, test it and, uh, if needed, uh, uh, change wording uh, uh, at the next General Assembly. Thank you. Uh, while we are uh, checking the situation with voting, um, uh, I would like to uh, turn to uh, sections five and six. Uh, we will not have any further voting uh, on any of the uh, items. And, uh, sorry, we will have uh, voting uh, on um, uh, section uh, four and section eight, of course, uh, but uh, five, six, and seven would not require voting. Um, uh, so I would like to give the floor to Emil Sotovsky uh, to uh, report on the major uh, feed events uh, and related uh, partnerships and marketing. Thank you, Mr. President. Well, this year was full of events, and as expected, uh, the main event was the World Championship match. And uh, if you remember my report last year, uh, we were very optimistic about the World Championship match that is supposed to change the financial situation of Peter, but also the way how we see and structure our income. And uh, I'm happy to just share that this optimism was not was was actually supported by the results, and we not only delivered but but over delivered. Uh, that is not only related to the match, obviously, but the entire concept that FIDE started uh, making money on its top events, starting building up very strong ties with sponsors and broadcasters. Uh, if you remember, we found ourselves three years ago in a situation when FIDE was uh, organizing or given the right, giving the right to organize the World Championship match candidates and some other top events to third party companies, uh, being satisfied with receiving something like 200,000 for, for the World Championship match. And the situation changed completely. And although we took this responsibility because we were not charging let's say when we had an agreement with expo we didn't we didn't charge them for the right of st staging the events they, they covered the expenses but we were uh, right in our assumptions that uh, if properly built these events should uh, serve as a major tool for FIDE to actually uh, get a very significant income that uh, resulted not only in a contract which would be for the one event, it actually lasting contracts both with Chess.com and Chess24 Chessable. Uh, also, our partners now are seeing the results of uh, the work, and uh, we can see it already that for next year's we pretty much secured both the partnerships, but also the organizing side. And uh, as you probably have learned by now, the candidates tournament 2022 was already agreed upon 
and we announced it just a few hours ago that it will take place in Madrid in June, July 2022. All the necessary funding is already there, and with half a year ahead of us, we are counting on uh, generating more funds from, from receiving sponsorship towards the event. Uh, a part of that, uh, the entire work of the marketing group, which is not, the group is actually quite small, and I'd like to, to thank the entire team working on that, but uh, the group is small but efficient. We will need to expand it because uh, our ambition goes beyond what we achieved this year. The results were quite good. The partnerships were strong, and I'd like here to thank Expo, who uh, did not only contribute to the championship by providing funds and the venue, but also the, the, the structure to work this way that we could synergize and promote the event properly. But we are planning to go from strength to strength. Uh, as you know, the World Championship cycle 2023 already have started. As I, uh, I told you about the candidates, but there are other events. Uh, and uh, we expect that uh, this, um, marketing part we learned some lessons we know where we have to aim at we have managed to build up a cooperation with uh, broadcasters not only traditional chess broadcasters but one of the successes was uh, showing the match on nbc sports network for three weeks running and that's for the first time ever and we already have tentative agreement to to cover uh, our major events in 2022 on nbc again so we hope that the candidates and the World Team Championship will get covered on NBC. At the same time, what's important to understand is that without investment, this thing would, would not go very far. So, and as we are aiming not to, for a minor improvement, but rather for, for something sustainable that would allow FIDE to uh, actually have an income that would go for all the important social and educational projects, as well as support of the PDC. Uh, this part uh, must become even stronger, and we consider uh, enlarging uh, our marketing team. Uh, and at the same time, the, the focus shifted a bit. If previously, in the beginning 2018, 2019, uh, it was naturally mostly the companies from Russia which supported the, the activities of FIDE, and we are thankful and grateful for their contributions. But we managed to actually have various, basically the entire world is actually working with, with us. We have partners from America, we have partners from, from China. As for online Olympiad, as you know, we, we had a big contribution there. We worked with Total, the French company. We had uh, several relatively minor, but still uh, important projects with Coca-Cola and it will continue. Uh, and what's uh, even most important, we've built a trust in FIDE. I think uh, I, I can feel it from, from our partners that they know that FIDE is reliable. They are seeing that uh, all promises we, we, we are delivering on them. And uh, this good faith cooperation is very important. I feel that it's uh, basically a part of our success have been that uh, people do trust us and they see that the we deliver and sometimes over, over deliver. Um, what can I say more for the next year? Uh, we do still have to find a, a venue for women's candidate tournaments. There are some negotiations ongoing. Uh, I think it would be, we would get an update within two, three weeks from now. Uh, and uh, overall, I would say that the whole concept of FIDE focusing on the on our main event and getting uh, getting them sold in a good way, uh, getting contracts with the broadcasters uh, augments each other, and um, this strategy bear fruit, and we'll continue this way. And uh, uh, as per approval of the budget 2022, we will have a chance to strengthen our marketing team furthermore. And, uh, and deliver and hopefully even in the year when we don't have a world championship, we will uh, have significant funds uh, arriving. Uh, but what is important to indicate, even in the years that there is no championship, we have a sustain sustainable income from the contracts concluded in 2020 and 2021. 
so this is more or less it for now. I could go in detail describing every and each and particular event, describing how strengthens the ties, let's say, with Emirates during the competition, and then they expressed their uh, happiness with the, with the way it works and uh, uh, concluded that they, they should be staging another event, maybe one event per year in 2022, 2023, and so on. Uh, I would spare all these details. I would just, uh, in general, uh, reconfirm, reiterate my optimistic uh, approach on the whole structure of how it works. The let's say I remember a year ago, two years ago, many people said that we are putting many eggs in one basket and we are risking a bit too much taking this responsibility. That the safer approach would be to secure some some uh, income. Some, but no, and we we are not going. To do this way, we are still relying very much on our ability to to work with sponsors to make chess both uh, attractive for spectators, for the wider chess audience, but also for the companies. And um, I'd like to thank you for your trust, and I'm open to your questions. Thank you. Thank you, Emil. Thanks a lot for your work and um, uh, for the report. Um, the results are uh, really. Uh, huge. Uh, uh, just uh, one um, uh, remark regarding uh, online event. There was a question from uh, Susan Mangali regarding um, uh, our plans for online events and related uh, 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 related uh, expenditure uh, in the budget, we have 100,000 uh, allocated for online event events for uh, 2022. Just answering, uh, uh, answering the question. And um, uh, we can also support some of the online events um, uh, from the development fund uh, uh, if it, if it, go, if it uh, is about uh, social dimension, including I would, disabled. I would just add that about the online event, we are currently in talks about major online events in 2022. And uh, I think pretty soon we could uh, update on that. There's some um major news may be coming but uh, it's a bit too early maybe at this point but once again i believe that uh, our perception guarantees that fide will be able also to grow in this direction as well as we all recognize the importance of online competitions thank you thank you uh, uh any questions or comments No? So, no questions? No? no? Good. Thanks a lot. Uh, we, uh, we proceed um, uh, with our agenda. Uh, yes, we got some signals that um, uh, uh, some of the delegates uh, uh, were unable to vote um, uh, in Section 3. Uh, we uh, uh, but we have preliminary results uh, um, uh, at the end of the uh, voting session, uh, and uh, overall, um, uh, we uh, in every uh, on, a, on every item we had uh, ninety or more votes um, uh, cast. Uh, so I will announce these results, but um, uh, we will inform you just in a, in a few minutes uh, how we will uh, proceed with the voting on other, uh, uh, other sections. So for uh, new members, uh, uh, to approve St. Vincent and Grenadines Chess Federation as a new member of FIDE, uh, in favor uh, 93, against three, um, uh, abstained three, so the decision is taken. Uh, Niger, um, in favor, uh, 89 against two, abstained three. The decision is taken. Um, on Belize, uh, well, while uh, the FIDE Council uh, didn't recommend um, uh, to accept the application, we have 57 votes in favor, uh, 17 votes um, against, and 16 votes uh, abstained. Uh, uh, so out of um, um, 90 votes that uh, uh, that we we have uh, uh, the majority is in favor of uh, uh, accepting uh, Belize as well. Dominica, 82 votes in favor, two against, uh, two abstained. Uh, regarding the letter um, uh, of the Ukrainian Chess Federation, um, uh, 
the decision was uh, to support the council uh, decision uh, about the situation. So in favor of uh, uh, the council decision uh, 70 votes against two abstain 10. The decision is also uh, taken. Uh, but uh, we will now continue checking the situation with the uh, voting system. Uh, while we are doing that, uh, I suggest we uh, go to section uh, seven, uh, Continental Association Reports. We start with Europe. Uh, uh, Zorab, uh, are you with us? Zorab? Hmm? No? Ah, th uh, Theodorus, please. Yes, Tadors, please. We cannot hear you. Okay. Um, thank you very much. Um, one moment just to... to improve in my... Okay, so uh, I want to say uh, uh, good uh, afternoon uh, to all from uh, Thessaloniki. Uh, I will not spend more than two minutes. Uh, our report is submitted in uh, uh, at uh, in the agenda. Moreover, we have a public report that we present in our General Assembly and it is in our website and in our uh, YouTube channel when you can see a very detailed report uh, from European Says Union with uh, 42 actions in 2021. Uh, so everything is available in public. Uh, okay, we don't need, uh, of course, to to play it because it's a, a lot of minutes, but uh, it's available for anybody that wants to uh, follow it. Uh, the only I want to mention, I mean, additionally, is that because this is something discussed very ma uh, many times in uh, ECU board, but most importantly, in the General Assembly, and we have a lot of requests. Is that as the European Says Union, we are supporting uh, very much and uh, with uh, and uh, all the rights of the national federations, as this uh, has to do with memberships, membership rights, and uh, representation in World or Continental Championship. We are strong in favor that all these rights uh, belong to national federations, and not only federations should not lose rights, but should get even uh, some rights, uh, more rights that they have before. Uh, I mean uh, that they had before, like uh, full representation in the World and Continental Championship, only with approval of uh, the National uh, Federation. The same is for membership, voting, and all these uh, issues, because this is the funda fundamental uh, issue of any international sport or continental sports federation. So I want only to mention this uh, during uh, our report. So thank you very much. I wish you uh, a happy new year and happy holidays. And uh, I want also to congratulate the FIDE president and uh, all the board for the very good, uh, especially marketing uh, work uh, and communication work uh, that they made uh, the last years uh, around the World uh, Championship cycle. Thank you. Thank you, Theodorus. Thanks a lot uh, for everything uh, that uh, uh, you and um, the entire team of uh, ECU are doing um, uh, to develop chess in uh, Europe uh, and also our collaboration between FID and um, uh, ECU that brought very important uh, uh, projects uh, forward. Uh, and um, I think uh, um, uh, we both agree that we should continue this uh, uh, in, the, uh, in the future. Um, 
So next one, uh, uh, Americus, uh, uh, Jorge, are you with us? Yes. Thank you very much, Mr. President. My report is already sent. I only want to remark that uh, <clears throat> I have been working very hard to include chess in other sort, the South American games, and in other Cave, the Central American and Caribbean games. Uh, chess is already in the other sort. Uh, I believe that we have a 90 or 90 something percent to be included in the Central American and Caribbean game. And also now I am working <clears throat> to include, not to include, but to save the Central American game in which chess uh, is already included. I have to travel a lot, but I think that was a fruitful one. I want, I, <clears throat> now I appreciate very much the support given by FIDE, <clears throat> especially by Mr. President and by Dana, which <clears throat> have supported us very, very, very much. And uh, to finish, I am open to any question <clears throat> the delegate may have. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Jorge. Thanks a lot um, uh, for uh, your report and uh, for what you're doing uh, as well. Um, uh, Asia. Um, uh, who is from Asia? Uh, Mr. Abunda. I unmuted. Okay. Yeah. You have our report. Uh, I'd like to emphasize that uh, chess is in uh, all the coming uh, regional Olympic Games, like Asian Games, Asian Para Games, Southeast Asian Games, Asian Indoor and Martial Arts Games. And uh, we're coordinating already for the uh, future uh, Asian Games. With, uh, uh, Olympic Council of Asia. And the rest of the report is there. If there are any, any questions, I can answer. Uh, thank you. Uh, any thank questions? You. No. I'd like to thank uh, Mr. President and FIDE for the success of the World Championship here in Asia, in Dubai Expo. Thank you very much. Thank you, Costa. Thanks a lot. Um, and Luis, please. Yeah. Um, good evening to delegates and uh, fellow members of the FIDE Council and uh, uh, other observers. Um, on my report, basically, uh, in summary, uh, we had uh, three um, uh, over the board events. Uh, we've got the fourth one of the year uh, starting tomorrow in Liberia, that's the African Juniors. Um, we had other online events. So basically it was a successful year in that we mixed both the over the board and online events. And we also had uh, seminars and other capacity building uh, workshops. Um, with regard to the uh, membership of the African Union Sports Council, uh, this was confirmed as a recognition and uh, chess will now be a part of the African games without needing to have a separate negotiation. So starting with the uh, African games in 2023 in Accra, uh, chess will be part of the games. The registration was done uh, on the 10th of December. So we are well on uh, set on uh, thing on going forward. Um, we have uh, uh, our online uh, uh, board meeting, SSC board meeting on the 15th of January and then Extraordinary uh, uh, Continental Assembly on the 29th. Uh, the no notifications will go out tomorrow. Um, we're pending uh, that some of the issues that need to be addressed coming from uh, the, the, the Congress. 
Um, on the disputes that are outstanding, um, obviously we have, uh, there is a report on the Morocco dispute where elections were held on the 8th. Uh, I think that that's uh, subject to uh, uh, clarification and completion by the, uh, after the reverse delegates uh, has issued his report. Um, yesterday in the council, we agreed that we'll make a follow up on the issues uh, surrounding South Africa and uh, Ivory Coast. Basically, uh, those uh, disputes have gone on long enough and uh, uh, obviously chess population is suffering. So we will follow up uh, uh, some council members, uh, uh, at least before the end of this week as agreed with the president. Uh, other than that, I'm available for any questions relating to uh, my report. Thanks a lot, Luis. Uh, um, thank you for uh, all um, uh, you're doing. And uh, um, uh, more generally, I would like to thank uh, all our partners and uh, continents uh, for um, uh, enormous contribution to the development of chess, uh, both official chess tournaments and uh, other activities. Uh, 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 you um, are doing great uh, job, and we will continue to assist you in all these uh, endeavors. So. Uh, uh, unless there are any questions, uh, uh, we can uh, um, come back to voting. Um, and uh, I would inform that uh, while uh, we're uh, about five to seven cases where people could not connect, now the voting system is working. Uh, uh, and uh, the, uh, we just opened uh, the voting for sections four and section eight, uh, both of them. Uh, the voting will last... Uh, uh, for uh, 20, uh, 20 minutes. Um, uh, while you will be doing that, uh, we'll keep the floor open if anyone wants to say uh, anything. Um, uh, uh, otherwise, we will just wait for the results of the uh, voting. Uh, if you experience uh, still any difficulties with, uh, with, with voting, uh, uh, please uh, reload the system. But I, I think it is working um, now for uh, everyone. Uh, and I would like to remind you uh, regarding uh, uh, section four that uh, we recommend to decline the proposal of the Papua New uh, Guinea Chess Federation in section four point uh, in uh, item four point uh, one point one. Uh, please um, um, uh, pay uh, pay the attention to uh, this uh, while we um, uh, propose to support all other uh, decisions uh, for 1, 4.1.2, 4.1.3, 4.1.4, 8.1, and uh, 8.3. Uh, <clears throat> so please uh, start voting, uh, and uh, the floor is open for any um, concluding remarks, uh, comments, um, uh, any information you, you may have um, uh, for the General Assembly uh, regarding your success stories uh, or issues.
Georgios Makropoulos, please. Yes, uh, Mr. President, can you hear me? Yes, and we can see you as well. Yeah. You can hear me. Okay. You know, I, I believe that it was a mistake that uh, proposals that they don't have the support of the Council, they are here in the agenda for voting. Uh, I'm afraid this was the problem with uh, the list, where uh, some people automatically they vote yes. And uh, most probably you can get another problem now with uh, Papua New Guinea proposal. Because if uh, people, they will vote automatically. Yes, I, I agree that there is a risk. That's why I noted specifically that um, um, uh, we all uh, propose to decline this proposal, not to... Not yes, to yes. You, you said, but you see, still, still that you will get the wrong result. These proposals, they, they have not to be part of the agenda if the Constitution is not supporting them. This is the point. Yeah, I, I understand what you're saying. Well, well technically, uh, from the legal point of view, we could not put on, uh, uh, we could not uh, avoid putting the uh, on the agenda the items that uh, a national federation wants to um, wants to uh, being considered by the general assembly. So, uh, but the, the risk is there. So uh, once again, for all those who didn't vote yet, uh, we propose to decline. Uh, so to uh, uh, to answer no.
Okay, uh, dear colleagues, uh, thank you for your patience. Uh, we have the results of the uh, voting. Um, um, so, um, regarding the proposals of uh, Papua New Guinea um, changes um, to the FIDE Charter, uh, 41 in favor, um, 63 against, uh, 13 abstained. So uh, the proposals of the uh, Federation uh, are declined. Um, next one, FIDE electoral rules, uh, 115 in favor, two against, three abstained. The decision is taken to approve the electoral rules. Uh, ethics and disciplinary code, 112 in favor, four against, six abstained. So uh, the decision is taken to approve the FIDE ethics and disciplinary code. Uh, to approve General Assembly internal rules, uh, 118 uh, 18 in favor, uh, no, one no one against, one abstained. Decision is taken. Uh, to improve um, FIDE awards uh, regarding Andrei Filatov, 122 in favor, no one against or abstained. And finally, uh, to uh, improve changes into the rules of chess regarding electronic score sheets, uh, 115 in favor, three against, four abstained. So the decision is taken to, to support uh, uh, these changes. Uh, so uh, I would like to thank everyone for um, uh, for participation in the uh, General Assembly 2021. I would like to wish you um, the best possible uh, celebration of the uh, new year. Uh, and of course, um, uh, good health uh, uh, and um, uh, enjoy uh, your lives. Um, uh, best regards to your families uh, and um, uh, let's uh, continue to enjoy uh, um, chess in general, watching, playing, uh, and uh, working uh, to put uh, chess forward. Thanks a lot to everyone. Thank you. Happy New Year to everybody. Bye to all. Happy New Year to everybody. <laughs>